what goes on, and I know enough to like from people saying it that Exile plays it like I don't I don't want to say wrong, but he just doesn't play it to like the meta. Like he just plays it how he envisions it, which I think is really cool. So like I had to do with one of my other CTL videos, if you're watching this on YouTube, I just hit the play button or the record button. So you're missing nothing more than a bit of an introduction as we go into group B and C of the all invitational. First map is Nicro versus Exile. That's what you've missed, and we've done some introductions. Uh, up here, top left, Exile, down here, bottom right, Nicro. Uh, some professional level stuff here. I actually killed my, um, the all invitational killed my bandwidth for the month, have I told you? Oh, really? Yes, uh, I, I hit my one terabyte cap by streaming 13 gigs at a time and then turning around and uploading 13 gigs at a time. Holy crap. <laughs> oh, it's fine. I think I get like two months of, um, of leeway. Uh, so chat here believes you should be CTL president. Oh my god. That's Can probably you one tell of my uh, IRL friends. I haven't been watching the chat. Um, I assume it's someone named Itchybug. It is. It's, well, Itchybug <laughs> says that you do likes women. <laughs> Okay. And uh, he did say CTL president, yeah. Yeah, you actually met him the other day. He uh, joined the call when we were in Google Hangouts. I did. What was his name? Uh, IRL? Uh, Cameron. Yeah. Okay, that's not the same Cameron. The Weeb Chat Cameron. No, no, no. It's a different one. I think when I start my uh, all-invitational newscast, Cameron will have to be a regular visitor on the Weeb Minute where we discuss yeah. the, the intricacies and politics of all the invitationals <laughs> Weeb Chat. Um, so a little bit of forward positioning here it looks like they're just trying to catch things moving across the map uh, things like this probe which is coming over here take a peek uh, get a little bit of scouting done uh, that path thing is going to be the end of them though that stalker is able to pick it off I, I do really do like this actually from x -Dot. i do like this forward positioning kind of spotting at the bottom of the ramp yeah it's it's really just to make sure that um an adept can't like get really close and then shade like i think the point of it is to catch the adept and force it to shade before it can get a like full skid of the base because you can't really deny the adept shade early on so is he um, just trying you to can't force it the shade early okay shade it early so it's in a, a suboptimal position when it makes it up here yeah because like if you think about it if that uh, adept gets to the bottom of the ramp shades and then backs off he can view your entire base but if you catch him out you know kind of by that little ramp area there or like uh, not a ramp but like the choke sure um where Micro just shaded now. He can't get an entire view of the base. He can only view so much of it. Such so a like, good catch there. Oh. But he does get in. Of course, he is going to commit these adepts to uh, scouting and getting some probes here. Uh, a couple of probes going down, so this is, has been pretty efficient. And he also does see that the Twilight Council is researching something. Do, do you um, like two probes for two adepts? Is that You think uh, that's a good trade? Yeah, I think especially with the information he gained. Like, he's seen that it was a Twilight Council... Um, and the fact that he was researching something. Okay. Uh, so I think that's definitely a, a load off my, uh, Necro's mind. Now, do you think he's like, expecting this? Uh, I think this is like fairly meta, like the Blink Stalkers. I, I know XLD used to be a really big fan of Blink Stalker Disruptor. Sure. Not sure if we're going to see that now, but um, definitely looks like it could be. I did catch you off. You're saying something about when you know what your opponent is doing. Yeah, it kind of like, it just gets so much off your shoulders. Like, you know, when you play blind, like, or kind of, I don't like our force too. It's it's just so scary because you don't know what's coming, you don't know what your opponent has, and um, I think it just makes you play way too scared. Now this shield battery is good, and we're going to be joined by an immortal before long. Um, if you can keep enough stalkers alive by the time this immortal comes out, um, he'll be in a really good position to push this back. Um, trying to use some force fields to his advantage there, not finding optimal placements, um, continuing to take losses as Exiled uh, puts, puts a fair a bit of pressure on this. There comes the Immortal as the probes come in to tank a little bit of damage. Uh, with the joining of this Immortal, we might see a turn. It's kind of hard to tell. Yeah, as long as Nicro can survive here, he will be fine. Um, those probes aren't that big a deal. Uh, great as we can see, Exiled up. hasn't been making probes of his own. That's a lot of low stalkers, um, but there will be more reinforcing this. We do have more a, shield batteries on the way. Yeah, more shield batteries. We have another uh, immortal. You're right. He did even out the worker supply, and as long as he gets back on it. Oh, here we go. Another push in here. With uh, this time, he's got his own sentries. Uh, very low number of immortals here. Um, as he takes a pop shot at the shield battery, sh uh, actually shields off the the uh, the stalkers from from having a good. Uh, surface area, another immortal coming to join the fray as that pylon goes down and kind of changes the game at the moment. Although this immortal can put down some absolutely fantastic damage, it's just not enough in the face of that many stalkers they continue to push forward. Uh, another immortal three stalkers here are the last bastion of hope uh, between 
uh, exiled in victory as two more pylons going down, hoping to get these shield uh, shield barriers back up. Good blink ma uh, microbe there as the stalkers continue to push forward up the ramp. Yeah, this is really unfortunate. Micro had his uh, shield batteries really exposed there. He kind of had to make a choice between building more units or getting that shield battery powered up, but unfortunately not able to, uh, you know, save his natural there and ends up losing the game. So if you remember from our last stream when we were dealing with these up, uh, unupdated replays, we're going to have to sign out and sign back in. Yeah, my favorite part of boot casting. I love it when this happens. <laughs> I would say it's probably going to be something we get used to. Um, I don't expect this is high on their priority list. Um, but luckily, I can just hit play, I quit play. I don't have to start typing. Um, don't yeah. need it. I, I mean, like, when you think about it, like, this could be a lot worse. Like, they could have just had it so, like, we couldn't even watch old replays, right? Yeah, true. So, at least, you know, at least we can watch these. Yeah, I wonder how that works. Do we have, like, every version of StarCraft 2 on our computer? Uh, no, because uh, I remember when they did the patch from HOTS to Legacy. Sure. I think it was like you couldn't watch any of your HOTS replays anymore because they did some big update to something. Okay. And I think it has to do with um, like how they cracked down on like cheating too. Well, that makes sense for HOT replays. Um, what do you mean crack down on cheating? So like when they're feeding so, like, in data from the web so, yeah, for so, their like, fight. Um, I assume it's something along the lines of like how they they had to change the game to make it so that um, people making hacks and stuff couldn't find ways to like you know uh, record the map and okay. then, like show show the player or whatever like for map hacks. Or well, because whatever. you are getting all the information. Yeah, As your computer is just only sh giving you the part that you should be given, right? Right. So I assume they did something along the lines of changing oh. how. That functions. I, and I had that, of course, break replays. I had that wrong. That was exiled swing, right? I, I think I typed that. Yeah, 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 exiled one. Two Protoss. All Protoss look alike. <laughs> yes, yeah, uh, so they're going into black pink next. Yes, I am loaded in. So whenever you're in, I will. Uh, okay. I will go. I'm loading in right now. Yep. Yeah, you go ahead and pause it so you get your, your time right. It would be so good one day that I got an observer and all I got to do is go. <laughs> That's how you know you're 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 professional. You made it, yeah. Like I, I I can just sit at a monitor. I remember one of the first times I cast uh, TB Ham was my observer. I was casting some like tournament for him and he was the observer. That's cool. Felt very professional. I was watching a uh, old old one of the old pig tournaments and um, it was on stream and he, I guess it, I mean. People were taking turns observing and casting it on pig stream, and that was a lot of fun watching some. Actually, Ice was there uh, from GNR, or when he was on GNR from D Life. Yeah. Um, that was a lot of fun, and then you're just kind of seeing all the, all all those great, you know, mid masters, low masters players getting together and having a good time. All right, I'm uh, loaded up in here. If we want to start a countdown, uh, go for it, all you. Okay, three, two, one, there. All right, take a quick look at this map before we do our introductions. Uh, to have a double ramp, this is a, a ramp to the natural, gives the advantage more to the defender. Uh, and it looks like they typically like to expand, uh, as I've seen, expand up and down, or uh, as opposed to moving forward close to the enemy, although that's a typical fourth base. Um, anything about this map that you like? You can see we do have towers here that might be contested. Um... Uh, I'd say this is probably one of our more standard maps that's in the map pool right now. Um, like, I guess for, for Legacy of the Void standard, that is. Sure. It, it's just like, you know, um, kind of well-rounded. Um, you can get up to a lot of bases, but it also is like, it's kind of um, secure enough that you can hide tech and fake your opponent out and do like, you know, two base all-ins sure. or do proxy builds, stuff like that. It has a lot of variety to it. Let's go ahead and uh, introduce our players. Uh, spawning in the bottom left-hand corner in the light blue, it is the Protoss, representing all in, <laughs> exiled. And up in the top right, we have in the red, taking a loss in that last game. It is Nicro. All right, so it looks like Nicro is starting with two gates. Uh, mirrors on both sides. Uh, very yeah. identical timings. Yeah, I mean, like, pretty much everything went down within seconds of each other. 
They must be taking lessons from the same Sim City builder. <laughs> yeah, I think this is like well, a big thing about Protoss that I will. It'll take me a while to grasp is like mm -hmm. why they place their Sim Cities, and because every matchup has like different ways they place their buildings. So it's just interesting seeing how they, uh, all the like good players can place their buildings. I was watching um, one of the Pig Dailies for Protoss openers and. It blew my mind. He put his. He told us to put it, the pylon off the ramp, like in the back, and then use your buildings to build the wall. Just, whoa, the yeah. pylon's safer that way. <laughs> so much goes into it. Now I like to classify Protoss as heavy in the spell casting division. Um, you, you, your buildings cast spells to bring your units forth, your sentries have spells, your stalkers blink, um, especially when you get into your Templars, even even creating a uh, high Templar, an Archon rather, um, requires Templars merging together, heavy on this like spell casting micro. Is, is, does that sound about right? Am I simplifying it? That's actually pretty interesting that you said like their buildings have spells. Mm -hmm. Like I never thought about it but, like that, but yeah, like Warpin is a spell. <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> um, I guess as I break it down, because I was trying to decide a while back, like every time I go back to like, am I playing the right race? I think Terran's a lot of micro, sieging, unsieging, burrowing, unburrowing, um, drops, you know, those little unit controls, um, spreading out your, uh, spreading out your um, Marines. Uh, and then Zerg is all about that, uh, that micro. Like, so I'm trying to think like, what do I want to do? Do I want to, do I want to be a spellcaster? Do I want to like, practice my sieging at advancing, you know, big units, or do I just want to get really good at queen injects? And that's, I guess that's how I broke it down to help me make that decision. Yeah. Um, do you Zerg, see... I, Go ahead. Zerg, I definitely feel like has so much, like, decision-making in their play. I always, like, what, as, like, I've started playing Zerg recently, and I'm just like, I don't know what to do half the time, and I feel like I end up losing games because of that. Because it's like... I don't know what units to build, so like even though I have all this like larva backed up, like I, I don't know what the hell to do with it. Now we do have a we just have a little bit of scouting trying to go on a little bit of adept here. We uh, if you didn't see me point over that starport is there, it's gonna send this first oracle. Um, maybe get a little bit of damage done. Looking on the other side, there is a stalker and some sentries. Uh, eight, two stalker, yeah, a stalker and three sentries uh, sitting here waiting to push it back with some shield batteries. So. Um, Excellent defense, I believe, here for this Oracle is it's not going to last long. It's going to get yeah. zero kills. That is disgusting. You know, if you have a shield battery, you need two Oracles to get anything. Um, like, you need to sit uh, attacking one probe for a long time before that uh, shield battery r will run out of energy. And he's going to come over here and find this, uh, potentially look for or find this starport. Starport. Yeah. Um, there goes second Oracle. You definitely notice a lot more Protoss players waiting for that double oracle before they even go into the mineral line. Mm -hmm. But uh, still, I, I definitely feel like double or proxy oracle is not as strong in this matchup as it used to be. I, I was explaining it to somebody who didn't play this game the other day that the, the evolution of, of Protoss in their defense. Because um, they have a lot of expensive units that come out a little slower, so they're susceptible to early game rush. Um, and you have different ways that they've gotten... You know, to defend that, we had Nexus cannons, pylon cannons, you know, mothership, mothership cores, and um, now we got shield batteries. Which which one of those is your favorite iteration? We have a little bit of push going um, on on the natural. Yeah, I guess we we'll talk about this. Yep. The push coming on first, but uh, Necro pushing up here with a couple stalkers, but Necro is or Exile, sorry, is able to hold him back. He has a warp prism too. Uh, not sure if he's gonna try to head across the map soon, but it's like nine kills total on these oracles. They've they've officially Ooh. made their money. Yeah, uh, especially after that kind of failed attempt at the start. Getting those nine kills is so nice. Um, getting out there just in time. Didn't didn't lose this one. Low on health here. Um, yeah, Nitro is still a bit behind, uh, I would say. Um, he doesn't really have that much tech out right now. Like, he's getting... He has his robot, and he's getting plus one. Sure. He has his Twilight Council Glenn. But Exiled has had these things for longer. And now Exiled is even going Colossus. That's weird. You know, the full base is been saturated a little bit uh, longer. Ooh, especially with that little Oracle, he's risking losing it. And as you pointed out, he does need two. Uh, here goes a Phoenix Scout across the map. I think he's trying, maybe trying to locate uh, the starport. 
Okay, so it looks like uh, both players are going to kind of back off now. Um, really interested to see what Exile does with that Colossus and that World Prism Ice. Is he going to go for, like, Colossus drops? So <laughs> that'll be interesting. I can You can carry one Colossus in a War Prism? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it, it definitely, like, when you look at it, it, it shouldn't work like logically but it does right now they're completely different sizes i figured it was considered one of those colossal units that couldn't be lifted like a um like if you can't lift it with a phoenix it shouldn't be lifted <laughs> well it, it can well, we do have a little bit of aggression here from nitro pushing out the ramp backing off just in time just to get a little bit of damage done uh, and this starport still unscouted back home um, he's still trying to tech up, uh, get a number of gateways. There was a couple cancels up here earlier. I didn't exactly get to see what they were. I imagine it wasn't a gateway, and he, he meant to put a gateway. Uh, okay, I didn't catch that. Yeah. I like the stasis ward. That's in an unusual spot. Oh, it looks like he's going to try to get a uh, a fair number of them up here to cover some multiple to cover multiple ground. Oh, that was really sick there. Did you see that? Mm, I did. He used a revelation to kill the observer. That was nice. Um, all right. You really gotta get your money out of, the, out of these um, oracles once they've done their their job. Uh, yeah, things like that help. Now, um, I'm not sure what Exiled is hoping to do here because Colossus are definitely not a unit we really see anymore in this matchup. Like, it's always been more about in Legacy: The Void, like the Disruptors or the Archons and the High Templars. Like, we don't really see Colossus very much. Um, and I, I'm kind of worried a bit, actually. Even though he has better Ooh. supply. Uh, oh, fantastic oh. for, oh. for Nicro <laughs> right now. Uh, this War Prism picks picks one up out of the... No, just picked it up. Um... Okay, but still, this is really nice, because I think Exiled is trying to do a two-base push here. Uh, sure. Because he, he has just gotten his third base, uh, whereas Nicro's is a bit ahead. I think Nigro is being pick. very cautious of his. And he even picks off the War Prism. That is, that is a sick play. This means any push from uh, Exiled, he won't be able to reinforce it for a while unless he puts down a pylon somewhere, but I don't see any probes. Well, it looks like he does want to at least get over here and start to section off some space for himself as his second War Prism is on the way. But you're right, any steam he hopes to keep is is has been really stunted right now. Yeah. Um, we do have a... Decent amount of Immortals and Archons out here, which have been the bread and butter of PvP for quite a while now. Oh. Um, but we'll see how well these Colossus can do. They do have range and plus two. Uh, Necro only on plus one right now. Even hallucinating in our uh, Colossus there, pretty cute. This engagement, um, looking a little better for Necro as he's got a couple of Immortals here getting good surround uh, with his stalkers, just in a, a bit of a better position. One hallucinated Colossus though, taking uh, a good amount of that damage. Um, as these Archons and these Colossus look like it's the end of days. Here comes a yeah. War Prism across the map. You're a little late, buddy. Yeah, see, like, the in Protoss uh, versus Protoss, like, uh, what I think really matters is, like, high burst damage. Sure. Um, because of the relatively lower unit count, and uh, there is a CGG. But I just think Colossus are almost designed for um, dealing with large amounts of weak units. But Protoss versus Protoss doesn't really have that. It doesn't, no. Um, they're, they're more of um, a small number of high units that are able to bunch together really well. Yeah, and like, they're just like not, like, aside from Zealots, I, I can't think of any other units that the Colossus is really strong against in PvP. I, you know, let's take a look at that. I think that the game winning play there was the, um, ah, the name of it, the trap. That caught the Colossus. That oh, the Stasis Wars. The Stasis Wars, thank you. Caught the Colossus, let them get the Warp Prism. That stopped all that forward momentum. Uh, stopped that timing significantly allowed um, for Nicro to, to pull back and get uh, get a defense going. Um, really what we wanted this, really what he needed. He needed time. Once that push comes, um, he's, he's a little behind because he put so much into this, to that proxy starport. He got Looked like 12 kills right at the end with the oracles. I, I saw the the probe. He got excuse me, three more kills at the end there. Um, so that was nice. Um, and just kind of all that kind of built up um, to that one moment where he, I'm on two bases. I'm ready to move forward. I can do this now. Bam! Now I'm now I'm, I'm delayed for another you know 30 seconds, 45 seconds. Uh, no reinforcements are going to be here. 
Just... Yeah, especially with um, how Exiled kind of like he, he stalled his own first third base for quite a while to do that. I feel, and he put a lot into it too with uh, the Colossus, which I don't think really scaled that well. Would you call that an all-in? Uh, I would probably say that's an all-in, or at least like, yeah, I guess we'll just say it's an all-in. <laughs> <laughs> um, all ends in the All Invitational, brought to you by All Inspiration. Yeah. We get a we get a nickel every time someone does a build like that. Oh gosh, you must be filthy. Yeah, um, we match. we are raking in the money. <laughs> I, I've joined the right team. I will go pro. <laughs> All uh, right. Uh, so I'm loaded in here. If you're ready. Yes, I am. Give me a countdown. Okay. Three, two, one, start. Oh no! Nope, back up. <laughs> we want to restart. Um. No. Pause it. Tell me where you're at. I'm at six seconds. Okay, um, so I'm going to mark all that, and I'm going to go ahead and start now. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're on Catalyst LE. Uh, game number three, we, we didn't play him out of unorder that would have gotten us in trouble. Um, so we, we don't know who is who's taking this game. Uh, this map uh, looks like... Ramp into the natural and another big opening, a much larger opening than Acid Plant. Uh, leaves a lot of room for, for sneaking in some good places uh, for siege units and really just one solid option for a third base. This one over here, uh, really blockable by this rock path and open to so many more avenues of approach that make it a very difficult thing to uh, obtain and maintain. Um, but with that, uh, sync free, take it away with the introduction. Okay. So spawning up here, we have in the top left, playing uh, Protoss and the Teal. It is exiled. And in the bottom right, his opponent, 1-1, uh, hoping to close this out. It is Nicro. Now, in the beginning, you said Exiled was the stronger player, and he played some funky things. Yeah, well, I think, I would say Nicro is, like, stronger overall, but I think Exiled has some pretty good PvP. Um, so I would say it's fairly even. Okay. It just really depends how... Uh, how they're playing on the day, I think. Especially with uh, someone like Exiled. Exiled is in university. So um, I don't know like what the you know uni schedule is <laughs> when he's uh, you know in school, when he's not. Um, and he was on a trip, wasn't he? I remember him saying He something was. He had that. just got back from a trip. Um, he yeah, had to so get his it, games it really in pretty depends, quick here. I think how well he'd been you know, focusing on StarCraft. Um, Whereas I, I guess I don't really even really know much about Nicro, to be honest. I'm not sure if he's in school or what he's doing. And really, Uni could be a, a detriment or a uh, positive to your StarCraft life, right? No matter. Yeah, I guess it really depends on what you're taking to and how, uh, how seriously you're taking it. <laughs> uh, what's more important, grades or your border? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it, it does look like two gates into a Cyberdex core is the standard PvP opener for these players. Um, and again, the exact same Sim City. So somebody somewhere analyzed the Sim City and said, "This is this is what you need to do. Do it." Um, only difference I've spotted so far is slightly different uses of their pile and overcharge. Looks like that probe is going to get smacked by that uh, stalker. Yeah, and uh, Nicro not getting another base here. What is he doing? Oh, never mind. There he is. Yep. See, we were talking earlier before the action hit. Uh, what you uh, talking about the favorite static defense, early defense of a of a Protoss? Um, oh, um, I definitely like shield batteries the best so far. Um, I'm not sure if they're like in their final state. If we want to say that, like, sure. I think maybe maybe they'll change something about them, you know, eventually. Um, but I, I definitely feel like it's a lot better than like photon overcharge, especially like. I hated Photon Overcharge in HOT so much where it just like, you click on a Nexus and it just like, turns a Nexus into a fucking fortress. <laughs> like, I, mean, I feel like the, the Protoss is just one of those things where Blizzard tries to design it with something in mind and then the community says, you know what, I'm going to use that aggressively. So we had like proxy Nexus being made and, and <laughs> but they were suddenly they were turning the forward Nexus cannons. Um, but it still wasn't enough for the defense, so they had to give it to the the pylons. And then you had pylons everywhere. And so they said, all right, fine, but you can warp in, but you have to have a gateway nearby. So people started putting gateways on their forward pylons. Um, and that continued until we have the shield battery. And now we're seeing, we, we saw it in the group, uh, one of our earlier groups, where they had a sh aggressive shield battery 
being used to reinforce a four gate. Um, you think there is an answer? Do you think shield battery was the right answer? Uh, I think it's the best answer so far. Uh, I'm not like I guess I don't really know what they'll change about it. Um, it is it is very strong. Uh, I'll say that. And I definitely have played against uh, far too many proxy void rays with shield batteries for my taste. It is super annoying to play versus proxy void rays with shield batteries. Yeah. Like, oh man. People do that PVT so much, and like it's just so annoying because like you can if you don't scout it immediately, like you pretty much uh, have to have super good control or else you just die. I think uh, I saw that PVT on um, on GSL. I think Maru did it. I, I think it was Maru. It's like um, Maru to Kumiho? No. I'm, God. Maru's a Terran. Maru's a Terran. It was done to Maru? Oh, man. Maybe. I haven't, uh, I haven't not caught up with GSL right now, so... I, I... What's, that, what's that map where the third base is... Um, one of the potential third bases is a smaller amount of minerals? Oh, uh, Neon Violet. All right, so Neon Violet, uh, the Protoss puts it on that smaller third base behind the Terran. Uh, sneaks a probe in there, gets like two shield batteries, uh, you know, and two void rays up before like pushing in and, and just getting the instant GG. That was, yeah, it is. Um, I, it is definitely like really annoying when it happens to you. I think it's definitely dealable, but it's just like it's one of those things. It's like you just wish it didn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we we give shield batteries. We can reinforce the shields of anything. Any cheese yeah. you want is now stronger. Uh, it's like those Protoss players that always used to um, do the pylon over charges by the ramp, like those stupid builds. Mm. They're just like, oh fuck, I frig like, photon over charges is gone. Like, what am I gonna do? All my builds are gone. Wait a <laughs> second. What if I use shield batteries off the ramp? Hmm. No, now instead of blowing you up faster, you kill me slower. It's so yeah. Ooh, disruptor. I like this. I didn't see that come out. Ooh. Oh, that's, uh, I think that was three or four stalkers killed there. That's pretty big. Looks like we are going to see some Disruptor on Disruptor play. Now, I saw this the other day. Correct me if I'm wrong. Disruptors now explode on contact. Yeah, it's whenever the, like, center, the center center ball, whatever you want to call that. It's um, a unit. Yeah, it blows up. So you can you can treat them like banelings now and, and send something ahead to take the shot. Yeah, um, I think they're definitely pretty interesting in this state. Uh, sure. I, I don't really see them very much, though, to be honest. Uh, I'm not sure... If they're even like good, but both players are going for them, so I assume like in PvP they do have some use. It, it seems to be this discussion of you know immortals or disruptors. We're just everything that comes out of this robux robotics facility is great against stalker. Um, stalker seem like such a great unit until they build a robotics facility. Yeah, uh, but we're only getting one. I only see one. I'm taking a step. Um, nope, they're Ooh. steady. Ooh, I missed a good shot, didn't I? Uh, well, one disruptor like sniped the other disruptor before it could snipe it. It was a deadly uh, standoff. Mm. Well, the other one got a kill on a stalker. Uh, I was counting the disruptors. It does look like we're three and four, uh, so we might see some nice stalker disruptor play here. Uh, one immortal, one immortal out on the field. Uh, I'd ask what your favorite balances of of uh, immortals to disruptors, but neither one of us play Protoss. Yeah, I think like. I think the disruptors are like an early game unit. Sure. Um, because I feel like uh, they're pretty hard to control. Like I'm sure if you've ever like tried Protoss, like you you know like disruptors they're they're really hard to control like properly along with the rest of your army. So I feel like uh, when you're Protoss and you transition into that later game, it's just a lot easier to have immortals and um like stalkers and uh, archons because you Ooh, just need to position the army. Mm. Ooh, some great hits there by uh, Exiled and his Disruptors. Um... Oh, one cool thing I just noticed. Uh, the Disruptors that have used their Disruptor Balls are, like, less bright than the ones that are recharged. Interesting. I'm going to watch this. I just re I just noticed that. I didn't know that was a thing before. But, like, the circle on the inside goes dark when, when, you, uh, when you shoot it. When it's on cooldown. That is a great little feature. I, I like. I did not realize that before. I like he's got these disruptors are forward. Um, now they hit a friendly unit. They don't explode, or do they? They don't, I believe. Okay, and, and yeah, it does really limit their ability to get massive army killing stuff in you know just a handful of hits. It's, uh, there's a couple disruptor balls coming out. Beautiful blink, only getting one center for two balls. Don't shoot two balls, one at a time. 
Um, grabbing one stalker there. Uh, and I see it's dark. Okay, yeah. No. Wait, yeah, that was friendly. Cool. You can hit friendly. He just got, got his well, own. Oh, did he? He did. I'm gonna watch it on my 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 stream to make sure I catch it. No, no, that was blue. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I can only imagine the amount of control it would take if you mm -hmm. could friendly fire. Uh, but yeah. looks like he's got to pull back. <laughs> and back home, though, a couple of zealots have um, pulled the whole army back. Yeah, these zealots don't even have charge, so this is a uh, this is a really good move actually from Necro. Um, just forcing this entire army back from Exile. Uh, looks like Exile is expanding pretty aggressively though right now. Um, I'm going all the way up to four bases really quickly. Looks like he did reveal a dark shrine, so we do have a couple. Um, we have a defensive DT. I love defensive DTs back home. Is that's DT blank on the way too? Uh, I don't see deep deep blink enough. I haven't seen it since that since that one game <laughs> really long ago when the protons yeah, blinked onto the yeah nightmare mech. went for it. Oh man. Okay, uh, Necro is getting a fourth base of his own, so he's not going to be too far behind in that aspect. Um, Necro is a bit down in supply, though. Um, really interesting to see. I, I assumed we would see Exile constantly be down in supply, but taking sure. good fights. You know, kind of like the stereotypical like underdog. He doesn't have as good of mechanics, but you know, he he just has this like killer instinct. Is it going but the other way? It's, yeah, it's going the other way now, where it's like well, he is up in supply and he's doing really well i guess when you can you, you're taking the pressure on the other side you know when you're attacking you can macro a little better uh maybe nitro is just under pressure um but you can see what i was talking about in that uh fourth base both opponents have opted for a different fourth um than what i had showed earlier uh, the one by the main uh, but taking different paths i like the forward one it puts you in a more aggressive spot as long as you have vision but it looks like he's using a couple he's using units for vision i love it uh, especially um Especially because they die, and you get a nice little warning. Yeah, um, I think vision is definitely one of the most like underrated uh, like in features of like StarCraft. Like people don't mention how good like a player is for their map vision because you have to be like very tedious with placing your units and being sure. aware. Like it's just like when you look at a mini map of like a lower lead player versus a higher lead player, like it's just so big of a difference seeing the. Um, the placement of units and like the constant movement. Even a stalker right there to, to see when the approaching army is going to defend. He's going to, I assume, throw out some disruptor shots. Yeah, if he's paying attention, does he have <laughs> micro? Oh, or... ooh, Neither player great seems pickups. to be paying attention. Uh, Exile looks like he will be taking out a couple of disruptors when losing some stalkers for it. Supplies are pretty even right now, though. Oh, we missed a little bit of a um, zealot drop over here in the main of Exile's base. Uh, looks like they're clearing out. All the workers, and, and just one... I mean, this defensive DT is nice, but it's... Wait, aggressive and there's, defensive yeah, DTs. Yeah, but unfortunately, there's no observer here for uh, Nicro, so he will eventually be yep. cleaned up here. Uh, that Nexus did go down, though, which is pretty important. Of course, so uh, Nicro is not looking at his base right now, and... Uh, okay, there he is, finally. Yeah, more more uh, units being being warped in on top of an attack here with uh, as the Exile kind of pushes into the fourth of Nicro. Um, and uh, uh, this is looking pretty uh, hairy here for Nicro. His army is definitely not as good as Exiled. Exiled has a lot more disruptors, a lot more immortals, and uh, just a beefier army in general here. And losing but, his mate is not nearly as detrimental as would have been losing his uh, third or fourth at this time, so we can survive this a little, a little longer. Yeah, that uh, his main was pretty much almost mine, dude, at this point, so it's not too big of a deal. Nicro in chat is here, and he says that Sentry Warp In was a mistake. Oh, yeah, I was wondering about that, actually. He did warp in a lot of sentries. I don't know where they are right now. I think maybe they died. They, they definitely died in that push. Yeah. Uh, looks like he's going to lose. He might lose that warp prism. Oh, no, the DTs are in position to take out the warp prism as pressure was pushed away. For, he's, he's managed to save his third and his fourth. Excellent shot there with the disruptors. Uh, oh, that was uh, beautiful. <laughs> A lot of money in the bank here for Exiled, though. Um, looks like he's really focusing on this army control. A lot of disruptor balls for nothing there, uh, though. I lost a little bit there, but I was managed to get a handful of disruptors. <laughs> um, good bl aggressive like blinker a, by Nicro. It's like a shotgun blast from the disruptors when they get really close. Ooh, excellent use of the disruptors there. Like, you can just watch the, the army he's shaving off of this disruptor. Yeah, and uh, actually really surprised to see Nitro coming in on top here. I just like he looked like he was in such a dire position, but um, he kind of like forced Exile to be all over the place, and he did take him out. 
um, forcing his army to kind of move, you know, from high ground to low ground, trying to get a good position. But all in all, Nicro was setting up for that really nice engage there. Yeah, I really love this Phoenix. Most people, the Phoenix is an early game scout, but that's a that's a nice mid to late game. Where's your army at? Uh, yeah, we have fourteen Dark Templars on the map for Exiled right now. Uh, I think Exiled is committing a bit too much to his base defense because mm -hmm. these these Dark Templars are all littered across his. Oh, there bases. we go. Yeah, he's he's actually I'm, I don't know how long I've been missing these Dark Templar, uh, but there is a photon cannon. He's depowered some very important structures as they blink away, pylon oh, after pylon. Um, I guess he could hit he him with the disruptor. disruptor. Yeah, he could use it. Uh, he does have his own Dark Templar there, an arrow with envision, so those will get all cleaned up. We do have a push over to Exiles third. More DTs um, in the mix, so no vision. Does, does Nicro have any vision here, though? No, uh, he's gonna I'm have to shoot them with the disruptors. They don't even. No, they can't even like instantly kill the DTs though, because they don't like. They need vision to kill them, right? Well, I assume the. Oh, like they need vision them. to explode upon contact. This, I guess. Oh, okay. So you could maybe time it or. or yeah, you have to manually unit. detonate it or something. Or I do, don't know how that works. I don't. Do they have a manual detonation? I don't. I don't know if they do. No, you have to just hover it above them, I guess. Like if Terran have to to position a probe over a mine to shoot a tank at your own probe, like. Like that, that macro, micro. Yeah. Um, I'm just surprised so many DTs are. They're gaining value. That they they're not supposed to at this point. They need to be archons for everything. I I understand. Yeah, if he had a bunch of archons here, he'd be in there such a better position. But, um, okay, there. Yeah, <laughs> there is. He says, Why "I got." Why they archon blink? Mm. <laughs> it should make it sense. Should be... Why Why would you lose? Why Why would you lose blink? <laughs> A little bit of pressure over here, just say a DT on DT fight. Um, but disruptors, ooh, blinking to your death there, buddy. Yeah, uh, looks like Necro has gone onto the DTs, and he does have a observer here. And getting two observers of his opponent uh, warping in here as a, just a counter pressure, of a decent sized counter pressure from Exod going down the middle of the map. So we're going to be. I don't think we're in base trade territory yet, but he's hoping to do enough damage down here and prevent enough damage up at the top. Um. Oh. Yeah, and it looks like yeah, Exile is just going straight for this base trade here. Ooh. Um. Not no. really sure about this. I think Exile's he in a really better position. Have a big army. Maybe? No, no. Nicro's just being slow about pushing into it. Nicro's getting a lot less damage done with his his forces than. Uh, than yeah, Exile but was. okay. Exile does have one observer here, so he will be able to kill these DTs, but. Ooh, shields. Good shields keep this army back. Not if they blink. Um, DT's down here in Nicro's third. Uh, army, Nicro pushing up the ramp uh, into Exile's main. And some de defensive DT's being warped in, but I believe this is Zerber. Observer. Uh, really cancels any pressure you're going to have. Still pressure here at Nicro's uh, natural. Uh, you know, honestly, I would not kill that Dark Shrine. I would just let that Dark Shrine live. <laughs> He's been warping in so many DTs. Uh, please continue. Yeah, and if we look at the banks here, like Exile does a huge amount of money in the bank. Um, mm -hmm. He was expanding really heavily, but he wasn't building enough infrastructure, I feel, to really keep up with his money. Um, and uh, he just wasn't spending it there. Like, if you look at the banks here, like Necro has a pretty big bank right now, but at one point, Necro was spending all the money he could, whereas Exile had about 2k in the bank. So, like, I think Exile definitely could have had an army that could have taken on Necros, but he just didn't have the infrastructure to build it. Right. And now Exile's lost pretty much all of his army. You see him trying to throw down a heck ton of gateways here. And if he gets them, he has minerals. He could make himself 20 zealots. Yeah. But still, <laughs> versus all the disruptors that we have, and, ah, uh, no. like it's going to be a tough uh, like comeback if, if, if it's going to happen. You see Necro oh. here taking every building out he can. Um, yeah. Exile uh, did just kill four disruptors of one of his, so... You know, Slight if you, you get good disruptor shots, disruptor shots, anything's possible. Yeah. And most of Necro's army is in these stalkers, so... Um, you know, this this could be doable for Exile here. Uh, he just has to take a super good fight. Uh, I don't think he's going to get it, though, as he is going in right now with a lot of uh, zealots on these stalkers. A lot of them are going to go down here. 
And that looks like it's going to be the end of Exiled's Army. This will be one of the last money bases here can't, or killed by uh, Necro. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe this was their game three, and they're really holding on to, to life here. Yeah, this is a pretty good game three, though, if it was. It was. A lot of back and forth. It came down to... I, it looked like it came down to a bad decision from Exile to, to start a base trade when he had the inferior force. Um, maybe hold on, hold the defensive a bit. Um, but it's hard to say in hindsight when we have all the information. Yeah. Maybe Exile thought he was a lot further ahead than he was. Um, I guess it might explain why he was getting all these Dark Templars, because mm -hmm. he really seemed to have a, you know, have a fetish for them this game. Esports. We're participating in esports. All inspiration. We are leading the way in the esports. Yeah. <laughs> esports. So that was our that was our first set of games, and it has been. What are we into this? Um, I know we're three, four gigs into it, but I, my my timers are all funky. <laughs> three, four gigs. Um. So yeah, Nikra takes that set. Uh, two one. We're gonna be going into uh, Terradin versus Nicro next. We're just gonna work right down the from top to bottom. Want to take a look at all these games? Um, I have tried to like pre-order them in, in in the past to try to to, to keep the um, suspense going. Um, but the number of you that just know the results anyway is fa unfathomable. Uh, I, yeah. be I believe Catawice is right after this stream. Um, we're gonna host them, give them a couple viewers, so stay tuned. Oh, really? They're starting. Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm just teasing. Somebody asked what time oh. was kind of wise, um, as if they were holding for us. Like, wait. Yeah, yeah. We told them we're like, wait. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna have 14 viewers. Please don't pull them. Um, I'm sorry, that was Terradin versus Nicro. We we're going into. It is Terradin versus Nicro. So we are, okay. we are two one. There, the Terradin versus Exiled was a walkover favorite for Exiled. Oh, those versions are, those are in current patch. Oh, all right. Then uh, I'll invite you. Yeah, that that is a hundred percent easier. <laughs> are all of them? I hope if it was just that one series, that would be so nice. Um, I think I looked at a couple of them, and that wasn't the case. So yeah. That's unfortunate. I mean, I'm pretty sure I remember every time I would cast like for the Invitational, like it would always get to that point where they did a patch and I'd have to do it on like um, past like versions. It's just like it's not too bad, but it is kind of annoying, especially since I'm on my like uh, my laptop right now. I don't have my nice uh, actual computer. Go like you're all VIP viewers. You're all very fantastic. Yeah. Um, so real quick before I hit play on this. Um... Uh, Nicro and Terradin, who's who's known as Animal Mother, it looks like. What can you tell me about these two players? We know a little bit about Nicro. We saw, you know, he, he was he was very strong in his macro. He had some 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 good answers, some kind of good timings and solid play. What about yeah, this Terran? Um, so Animal Mother, um, he is a, a mech player, all in all. I, I doubt we'll see any stem research this entire game or oh, series. Man, awesome. He, uh, he's going to go for some mech builds. Uh, I guarantee it. I don't know what he's going to go for. I, I, Cyclones? I'm always Lots interested. Cyclones. Probably. Um, he kind of has his own brand of mech too. Like, he doesn't do, like, whatever's meta. He just kind of does, like, whatever he feels like is good. Okay. Which is pretty awesome. Um, and I always enjoy watching his games. He's a pretty solid player. So, hopefully he can show us some good uh, mech versus Protoss. Something other than Protoss on the screen, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you damn straight, Golik, yay. Yay, indeed. Because um, y'all are all fantastic, so. I don't have to pause it. Oh, man, it feels great. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Best of three here loading in on this uh, catalyst again so we get to see this map played with a little bit of different flavor um, we do have the uh, very small ramp we talked about the very large opening from the natural out a um, little bit of uh, conversation here I do think the first aggression was you know what God. you know what I we, we loaded the wrong game we but only because these players aren't labeling for garbage and so if you're seeing spoilers shut away now stop looking this is nothing. Spotting in the top left-hand corner, in the light blue, the Protoss, <laughs> it is Nicro. 
And then the bottom right, we have in the orange, trying to spoil that last game. <laughs> it is Animal Mother. Oh, man, these players are awesome, and I love them. Um, so, Animal Mother here. Gas first. Oh, no, excuse me. He's building a wall on the natural. Um, yeah, that was a gas first, so you were right. It, it was. It is very early. Um so maybe you know that that's as I understand it. I, I keep getting excited. I'm like gas first. That must be Reaper Rush. But I forget that that Mech has been in favor for more than a year, and gas first is how you do that because those things are yeah. expensive. Um, pretty much, I think uh, gas first is pretty common in Terran versus Prodash right now. Um, a sure. lot of TVP seems to revolve around the strength of the Cyclone in this matchup. Um, and so if you want to get out a decent amount of those, you normally need to go for a gas first uh, mm -hmm. and do a quick factory. So it uh, looks like what I assume Teradon's going to go for here is he's probably going to get that Marine out. He's going to get a reactor on that barracks, and he's going to react out at least four Cyclones and uh, use those to pressure. I, I think I said in the previous series that Cyclones are the Hellions of TVP, and th that's kind of yeah. how you have to yeah. use them. That's fair. And you got to be aggressive with them, try to get some, some damage done early on, light yeah. harass. You can, you can really do a lot of damage to a Protoss player early on if they aren't prepared for uh, the Cyclones to come in. You know, you can kill a third base. You can trade really well with some Stalkers if they don't have an Immortal out or if they don't have uh, enough Sentries. I'm not sure if Necro knows about Teradon's, uh, like, uh, aptitude, or aptitude, aptitude, sorry, for Mech. Sure, sure, sure. So maybe he just thinks he's going to be playing bio and goes for a, you know, bio build. Looks like he's going to opt for a couple more reins rather than um, just try to time out this cyclone lift or this uh, factory lift off. Because um, without a doubt, he's going to take this factory so he can double out his cyclones. Um, taking his natural now just as he's finished his wall. I do like this bottom bottom ground wall in. Um, yeah, it's kind of interesting. Uh, I don't really see this very often, but uh definitely an interesting way to do things uh looks like he's going to Ooh. be going for a very aggressive push yeah a couple scvs are really going to extend the life of, the, of this push marines catching up um to him now i love the position on the stalkers though this is early warning as we saw last time necro loves vision he loves putting things out here but this is a very different push in the previous one he was trying to catch out um oh exile thanks for following brother um, okay, so this is getting kind of dicey here for Terradon at the moment. Um, with the amount of stalkers that are out, and especially with that cyclone getting picked off, I, I think this push is over. <laughs> it is. It looks like it was um, really well played by Nykro. As I was talking earlier, his his stalker positioning for Vision is very specific. It looks like for Terran, he was positioning him for, uh, for the defensive. He doesn't have to necessarily worry about the, the shades. But as we saw in the last game, he positioned him forward, as, as you pointed out, to help disrupt those shade timings. Uh, he's going to get those two SCVs, four Marines, and one Cyclone with all his Stalkers surviving. And he gets to push across the map now with full shields. Um, maybe do a little bit of poking? Yeah, and he, he will be following this up with uh, Blink pretty shortly. Um, so he can just keep uh, parlaying this into more and more pressure if he feels like. And this is going to be really annoying for uh, Terradin here to deal with. All right, a little bit of miscontrol there, and all right. Uh... All right so it uh, looks like we will have Nitro backing off now. Um, I guess just deciding he's going to be a bit safer. He's going to keep his units alive so he doesn't get cut out. And uh, Terrigen here has been forced to stay on two base for quite a while. Uh, no third base inside here for a while, so um, and Nitro is going to get a significant uh, advantage here in this economy because of that. And we even see a bunker coming down here. So Animal Mother is just going to, you know, he's here for the long run. He's going to yep. be uh, trying to defend as much as he can. We did see a little bit of chat in the beginning uh, where Turtling was seemed to have been a piece of advice he had taken. Uh, whether or not this is appropriate as Protoss settles into a third base, um, only time will tell. Um, looks like uh, yeah. third commencement is going down, though, so he's only worried about this uh, hasty aggression. I feel like... Um... 
as a, a mech player for this matchup. Like, you kind of need at least three bases of gas to really get out a, an army that you would want to have mm -hmm. in this matchup. And uh, I, I'm really not liking these, like, delayed third uh, command center builds. Like, there's a build that's been common for a while where you go for four cyclones and you use that to expand really quickly into a third base. Okay, a lot of mobility um, there. Yeah. Ooh, check, um, taking advantage of the very slow positioning of Terran blinking up here, uh, warp prison for reinforcements. This is very, very good for him. Yeah, I, I don't think Animal Mother has enough to do. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, I and, saw that. Uh, that was an unfortunate end siege. Yeah, his his units just weren't in the right place. Um, when you're going for those mech builds, like in the early game, you just have so few amount of units that it's uh, pretty difficult to deal with all the early aggression unless you're specifically prepared for it. Sure. Um, so as we've seen, obviously, the siege tanks weren't in the right place, and they did get killed. And, you know, for a moment there, they were in a better position, but unseizing to try to follow that attack that actually moved closer to the siege tanks um, made, the, made it a little worse. So um, we'll see what this first game looks like. We got a little bit of a, a spoiler um, and the last one, this one is on black pink. I think this is going to be a bit better of a map for Animal Mother, just because of uh, there's a ramp immediately for the second base. Whereas on Catalyst, there's kind of like um, like a bit of flat ground before the ramp. Sure. So it'll be a li little bit easier for him to hold on on two base. But uh, anyways, starting with our players here, we have in the bottom left, in the teal, we have Micro. And in the top right, the Terran, in the orange, it is Terradin, otherwise known as Animal Mother. Is that a, uh, was that a recent name change for him? Uh, he's, so I think Terradin's his name on EU, and then Animal Mother's just always been his name on NA. Got it. So, um, uh, I guess I'm not sure how long, he's been using Terradin for at least a year. I, I don't know how long he's been using it, but at least a year, I'd say. Well, we're going to see this forward wall again, um, so something he really likes to do. Uh, and I can see it being very... I mean, at least against um, Peritas, this feels like a pretty good answer. I wouldn't want to take that long to get a wall up against her. That feels, like, uh, dangerous. Yeah, yeah, I guess for TVP, you don't really have to worry about, you know, fast-moving links flooding in your base really early, so. <laughs> uh, but this will be really annoying, actually, with uh, Necro oh just going to use probe. To I hate this. <laughs> this yeah. is the worst as a Terran. It's like, I always hate people who, like, harass with their workers at the start. Like, people who hatch block when you're playing Zerg, like, tilt me so much. People who attack your worker when they're building something when you're playing Terran, tilts me so much. There isn't a whole lot you can do, like, versus Protoss, I guess. I guess you can, like, get Engineer Bay blocked or, like, Hatch block, right? Right. But, like, that doesn't really happen that often, or at least as as often as I've seen. A little bit of a cheeky um, probe there. He's getting a fair amount of bit of damage done. Looks like he's going to get home alive. A little bit of a tag out there between uh, the SCV. The, pro the probe actually doing a fantastic job of... He's only taking one hit point into his life, running away just as his shields run out, kind of prolonging this fight. Um, oh, a little bit of mismarker there. Just kind of, I love watching these these worker fights. Uh, it looks like he's going to try to either get a look back or keep this uh, SCV out as long as possible. Uh, back home, he's got, there goes his second gateway. Now, cybernetics core down and warp gate research on the way. Natural just about to finish up for Nicro. Um, there we go. There's a Marine. The Marine's going to get in here. Uh, Nyker's going to see, I guess, what he expected if you're crawling a... If you're saying that Terradin's really well known for his for his mech. Uh, doing the switch out a little earlier this time, going for uh, two Cyclones first off of that reactor instead of two Marines. Yeah, um, I, I really don't like those early pushes with Marines. I think uh, just Cyclones is a much better solution. Mm -hmm. um, just because of, how, like... You know, recently how strong the stock has been in this matchup. I just feel like Marines don't really... They don't really add much other than, like, a bit of uh, tanking for your Cyclones. Like, they don't stay alive very long in a fight in the early game, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Absolutely. And he's actually going to be really aggressive with them. I, I do, and I do like this Hellion-Cyclone combination I've been seeing a lot more lately. Um, push back the Stalkers a little bit, do some damage to the Probes. 
but we're going to see how effective that is in a moment. There's a good shield better down here, and Stalker's continuing to be rallied up to the front door as he's finding a good position on the high ground. Very forward. Wow. Yeah, and uh, Banshees of Cloak coming up here, too, from Animal Mother. No. Um, but four Stalkers is definitely enough to push back these Cyclones. Um, Absolutely. Especially with how active Nycro has always been with his Cyclones, like, as you mentioned. Like, he's just so good at, like, being out there ready and waiting for stuff to come like he's not just gonna have his units in his base like he's smarter he knows that you have to be proactive with your units you have to be at like you know you have to use them right like you build them for a reason you can't you can't sit in your base as and uh what's it called poop, poop in your pants yeah can't you got to get out there and get their value or else you might as well have um built a built another orbital yeah uh, looks like Animal Mother really likes this, like, one base style. Um, he really wants to, like, throw the Protoss off in the early game. Uh, instead of that, like, I guess, economic play. Mm -hmm. Well, this Banshee uh, looks like it could get some damage done. The first thing out is a Warp Prism. Yeah, uh, there is a Shield Battery, though, nearby. I'm not, I'm not sure if that covers all the workers, but... Uh, I know Shield Batteries do out-damage Banshees, or out-heal Banshees, sorry. Okay, for at least as long as I have energy. Um, yeah. Um, but in the middle of the map, actually, it looks like uh, these Cyclones and Hellions are going to be able to pick off these uh, Stalkers and that Banshee even adding some extra damage. This yeah. is actually looking pretty scary for Nitro. I, I, do like, I do like this Banshee coming back instead of trying to get some probes, making sure the main army still has a push. Uh, but the War Prism is in position. Uh, well, I guess it, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't. It's not forward. Um a shield battery, kind of the fight Nycro wanted to take. You're right, though. It is looking... Actually, it's tough to tell now as probes are being pulled and more units are being warped in. Animal Mother, or Terridan may have overstayed his welcome. Uh, a lot of probes going down, though. Five, six, seven, nine. Nine workers being lost as... Um, actually, the Cyclone kind of pulled back from commitment. Ten workers lost altogether. Yeah, and, like... So I guess if we look at the big picture here now, like, yeah, this looks great. Like, you know, a lot of probes were lost. But Animal Mother's only getting his natural base up now, and he's still down workers. So, yeah, that's like... fair. And he continued the pressure when um, he wasn't going to gain anything from it there right at the end. Uh, having that Banshee floating around as a threat, having that even damaged heavily, that extra Cyclone. Uh, yeah, I, I think you're definitely right. He did overstay his welcome there. Like, I think if he just killed those units and then immediately backed off, He's, he's still okay. This auto... Okay, he finds the auto rally, fixes... Looks like he's going to fix that point. Uh, bring everything back home for the counter pressure. Coming across the map now. Um, and the mortal is in play. And the mortal kind of changes this game up uh, quite a bit. But depending on how long Nycro sits down here, we are going to get two uh, Hellions at a time. Although I wouldn't mind seeing more Banshees. Uh, he did just finish an Orbital Command, though, and it's going to be a minute before that pays itself off. Um, that Overseer giving him some good vision on the high ground. Um, yeah, and this is going to be really annoying for Animal Mother to fight into. Uh, that Concave is going to be pretty nice at the bottom of that ramp. Mm -hmm. One Stalker going down. A couple SCVs sacrificing themselves for the greater good. Uh, here comes this Banshee coming in to join this fight. Is there a lot of... A lot of Cyclones sitting in this map, not engaging. Um, kind of indecisive, I guess, would be the way, way to put it. Uh, as he decided this is the fight he wants to take. Uh, Cyclones going down, Stalkers being uh, blinked back. Uh, constant warp ends. And looks like Nycro has been pushed off for now. Yeah, but all in all, Nycro, he's getting this third base, or his third base is up now. So yep. I think he's still in a great position. Like, um... As I said, I don't. I'm not really a fan of uh, like these kind of like one or two base builds, uh, just in TVP in general. Like especially for mech. Sure. I feel like if you're going for mech, like it's a lot better to go for those like economic plays. Go three bases, secure yourself with a with a few tanks. Really, get that early turtle in so you can push out. Yeah, I just I feel like um, especially against a player who's as good as Nitro, like he's not going to get thrown off by these like early aggressions, like. Maybe if he was playing against someone a bit like, you know, like a lesser player, you know, these these all-ins can work really well because they don't have as many units out, they don't have them in the right places, and uh, they might, you know, kind of freak out a bit. They might not macro as uh, well as macro is. 
but Nitro's he's doing really well. I like these adepts, um, <clears throat> but I guess depending on how I see them used here, is this warp prism is going to go in and drop a couple stalkers? <coughs> I do, I do like this about the Warp Prism. He can decide to commit. Um, he can decide that he's just pulled enough units back that these Adepts come in here and, and, and get some damage in. Um, he can pull the army back and forth, back and forth. Even though Cyclones are mobile, you can still only be in one place at once. And it looks like he's he's aiming to keep his Cyclones in the main base, not falling for this um, being pulled both ways. But he loses 12 workers due to that decision, not pulling his SCVs up back up to the main, not securing it. And as you said, he's on two bases. He rebuilds that a lot slower uh, than his opponent, who's actually got uh, a 30 worker lead right at this moment. Yeah, this is this is going to be really tough. We got two two on the way as well as charge. Um, it's really Necro has all the tech in the world that he wants. Um, a couple banshees coming over here. Really gonna have to do something special here if he wants to uh, win this game. Do you think something special is three banshees? Um, you know, maybe they come in and they pick off some tech structures. You know, that could definitely be a nice way to come back. You that, know, if they pick off those forges. That is a good pylon. Uh, that's a couple of good workers there. Um, he did he did uh, cloak a bit early. Yeah, um, still, I think, like, someone like Necro is not going to get, like, con I guess, like, disillusioned here. He's not going to freak out about these Banshees too much. I think he realizes the situation he's in. Sure. And he's just going to be calm, and he's going to hold on. Well, they do have um, a significant number of kills between them. Uh, that first Banshee is a little mistelling because the uh, but 13 workers killed in this push so far. Nikros handed it okay, but he, it's hard to be in every every place at once. Interesting as he kills the super oversaturated um, 18, 18 actually, <laughs> 18, nine, 20, 20 yeah. workers. This is I, you can't downplay this anymore. He has done fantastic damage. Yeah, and he's he's almost evened up the worker count. Um, still though, I I am still worried. We don't have a third base up yet uh, right. for Terradin, so not even in um, production anywhere. Um, and this is enough. This isn't enough damage. He, he knew he was just poking here, um, chip off a bit of life before shields recharge. Still war prism, still over there for Nicro. However, these cyclones are still in position, waiting, waiting for this inevitable. What he, I, I guess, what he feels is this inevitable pushback. Um, as there goes the command center, third command center being pushed down at the same time as the nexus finishes up, the fourth nexus for Nicro. And, and you're right. It's it is this is a this is a tech game. Nicro is in the position he wants to be. Uh, the more time he stays here, he's feeling he's feeling good, and it's easy to recover from twenty one workers. Um, yeah. Oh, interestingly, interestingly enough, in the uh, animal mother's base here, looks like he is going to be going for battle cruisers. As we do see three starports on the way, will Ooh. we see a battle cruiser in this game, or will he make it that far? I a fusion core. That's nice. I I would love to see some some teleporting battle cruisers finish this game off. Yeah. That would be pretty sick if he could just micro one battle cruiser and kill all of uh, Micro's army somehow. But it doesn't look like that's going to happen as his army is cut out of position here. And all these Cyclones are going to go down. And that is 2-0 to Micro. It is 2-0 to Micro. And Micro has... Looks like he's going to advance. He's 2-1 he's so far in the set. Um, go ahead and center my, center my alignment. I don't have to, to leave the StarCraft game right now and restart because we're looking at current replay builds um so hello ice i stopped in here yesterday if you didn't if you saw uh, power trip did you get to watch tech tech force power trip yesterday uh i watched a bit of it i didn't catch all of it um i remember i there's orion was spamming chat because ice was like doing doing like a rant about the rules or something Mm, I missed that. I part. don't. I don't. Oh, I don't know. Like what he, what was like going on or what's happening. All I know is I had a rant, and it was apparently interesting to watch. Uh, World is Doom versus Exiled is the next game. Um, these are labeled, um, but they are going to be Watch Solo. Yeah. So I'm going to leave the party here. And Exiled versus World is Doom, game one is going to take place on each East Watch. I'm going to go and load in and pause and wait for your signal.
Okay, I'm loading in as well. Yeah, I'd I... like to say thanks to whoever labeled these games. Much appreciated. I mean, I guess I could like pre-watch them and really prep a script and a uh, and some jokes. Really, <laughs> really take this um, to the next level. I, don't know. I, I I always liked watching games like before I knew what happened. I always uh, I don't like watching like or I guess preparing too much. I can't no, like, yeah. do everything on the fly. It's hard to fake that excitement. You're like, yeah. if I was him, I would really build DTs right now. Oh, look at that! It's almost like he heard me. Wow, I'm really smart. <laughs> I'm brilliant. Um, <laughs> so we are watching. This is the third exiled game here. So this will tell us a little bit. Um, actually, with um, Wait, Exiled... No, Exiled wasn't in that last game. So Exiled took the walk over. He lost his first match. So this is actually an important game for Exiled. Um, whether or not he ex exits this. So I spoke wrong. Nicro took both those games. So Nicro's in a really good position um, to close this out. And I'm ready when, when you are. Yeah, I'm going in right now. Just give me one sec. Hey, no problem. Uh, Itchy Bug says, here's a joke. Siegfried is not president of CTL. Siegfried, not president of CTL, is the best. I I have no clue what he's trying to say. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. The sport jacket's been requested. <laughs> one, one moment, gentlemen. Uh, there we go. Oh, if you didn't notice, all inspiration t-shirt came in the mail. Oh, nice. Yep. It's very comfortable. The charcoal gray. I think I, I don't know if I no, I was talking to, to, to Shazam Poof earlier about it. Charcoal gray, if you ever see it in a t shirt color, it's actually a better material. It feels feels wonderful. I, I get all the charcoal colors I can. I don't think I've ever heard anyone say that. Like I stumbled upon it accidentally. I was like, that color looks good and I bought like five different t shirts. Um and half of them were charcoal, half of them weren't, and I just love the charcoal colors more. Something about them just feels nicer. Huh. Um, so, all right. Uh, I'm loaded in here now for ready to start. All right, go and give me a countdown. Okay, three, two, one, start. All right, East Watch is the map. Uh, take a quick look at this before we do introductions. Uh, we do have double ramps, one for the natural and one leading out of the natural for both opponents. Um, the obvious expansions are continuing um, up uh, north-south, but this one over here is a gold, and it has uh, less avenues of approach uh, than some of the other maps do for their second optional thirds. I've also seen forward positions uh, being taken down here, a little bit of banter uh, in the chat, a little bit of good, good-hearted banter, so... Uh, Sacred, why don't you take us away with the introductions? Okay, so we have spun up here in the top right, in the red, playing Zerg. It is World is Doom. All right, his opponent in the bottom left, in the blue, the Protoss. It is Exiled. Uh, this was the one we talked about. Has a special way of doing Protoss. Now you said that, and then he just mirrored his opponent. Nope. Yeah. Um, I'm freezing up a bit. Are you? Or did I? Hit? Uh, I'm good. You're right. Oh, oh, okay. What, what, what's your time? I'm at one ten. All right, go ahead and pause that for me real quick. Okay, I pause at one fifteen. All right, seven, <laughs> seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. All right, we should be good. Okay. Um, I was hitting some buttons to zoom in to be fancy, and I think I snagged the pause button. Oh, that's right. I always, um, there's one button I always use to hit by accident that like brings you back to the start of the replay. Hmm. That's uh that would be a fun one for this cast. Uh, so a little bit about PVZ. Uh, I'm gonna give you the expert knowledge here from your your plat one diamond three caster. Um, I like Roach Ravager, and I love it until Immortals come out. <laughs> um, I I love it until I'm macroing up and realize he had Void Race the whole time. Um, but as it turns out, tech switch is really easy. As long as you have vision. As long as these little buggers get out of the map. These little overlords. Now, I don't... I, I love to spread overlords. I love to spread map vision all across. Up, down. <coughs> excuse me. 
all avenues of approach, all bases, and it's great until that first Void Warrior Phoenix comes out and starts killing all my overlords. <laughs> and for the next minute, I'm just like, oh, another overlord, another overlord, another overlord. It's um, like the worst feeling. <laughs> you know, it's better when I see they could do it and then they don't, and then they don't commit to it, really. Yeah, when, when they're gentlemen about it. Right, they kill that first one and then they leave you alone. <laughs> oh, yeah. Gentlemen, you think, a gentleman? That's nice. <laughs> I don't know if I ever I mean, thought about kill, that. They kill the first one, and they're like, listen here, that's enough. You pull your overlords back, or I'm going to keep killing them. <laughs> no one's ever been that nice. I just assume that... Yeah. I mean, I assume it's not intentional, but maybe it is. <laughs> maybe that's the my mistake. Uh, so Soul Link's here trying to catch up to this adept. Uh, actually, I, I was going to say a handful of adepts, but that's just two and a shade. The minimap um, says all. Um, I'd say I'd want this not to finish. But he's actually going to, Exile's going to commit to one adept kind of running around. There he goes. All right. He decided, he decided better against it. He's going to try to stay safe over here. Um, as the queen comes in to say hello, then he gets out of there. There you go. Two adepts. Two adepts is the magic number. As a handful of links sit here on the top of the ramp, and I hope to spawn that quickly. Yeah. Um, Ooh, Dark Shrine coming up. Uh, looks like Exiled is going to be doing... I assume it's going to be that um, ro uh, Robo build with the Warp Prism DTs and then into Archons. Robo build and the Warp uh, Prism DTs, that's fair. And the DTs, I, I believe the DTs were spotted. Uh, no, wait. They weren't. No, that... That's pure luck for Spore Crawlers. Yeah, he might have been... Um... Just doing that blindly in case of an oracle, I guess. But uh, of course, you know that will help with the DTs. But a uh, real problem is obviously the archons that follow up. Sure, because once DTs stop being useful, archons never do. Yeah, like archons are just super good. And uh, yeah, this is I I don't really see this build as much anymore. But this was like the way to play ZVP or PVZ for the longest time. So he is going to see this now. He's going to see everything. Uh, that's being hidden down here. Uh, these adepts are going to do a good job of zoning out any real damage other than scouting. Uh, it looks like these things are going to try to go home. Okay, and it uh, looks like World is Doom. He's also using the kind of classic um, Zerg response to this Archon drop. So uh, normally what uh, I guess Zerg's kind of figured out the, the way to do things uh, to deal with these Archon builds is you just get like 10 roaches and use those to kill the Archons because... Um, Zerglings, they're not the greatest versus Archons. Like, you have to make a decent amount of them to do anything. And, like, if you don't engage at the right time with your queens, you know, things can uh, kind of end up a bit messy here. But the uh, Roaches are definitely, I think, the best response. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, and I, I do love restating the obvious, but I won't pretend to know this for fact. Archons are splash, right? Yeah, they do a bit of splash. All right. So you get that surround with the lings, you're, you're you're in a better position. But you get a nice wall of archons, it's hard to, to stand up against that with the swarm. Yeah, um, especially if um, Exiled has good micro DTs. Looks like he's not even going to bother with the DTs. Just going to go straight with archons. And he's also getting blink, um, so Exiled kind of... I like I, this. I, yeah, I, I have no clue what he's doing with that. It's a, I mean, we're seeing two, two warp prisms out here. Um, maybe even he gives himself away up here in the north, and this one in the south... Uh, comes in once he's pulled everything. Um, we'll just kind of see, kind of keep an eye on the mini map on the bottom to see if he initiates that pull again. Um, and there you go. He unloads a handful of DTs uh, and continue to kind of do this pickup play over here in the north as we kind of keep an eye on the mini map there in the south. Uh, there are the roaches. You're right. Roaches were the response. Um, and, oh, the juggling is great. Yeah, still taking a, a decent amount of damage on those Archons, but of course, uh, you know, if he picks off a Roach or two, that is free damage. Ooh, uh, we do see Shadow Stride has finished off, so these DTs on the bottom, they may stay DTs, and they may be blinking as uh, yeah. this harassment continues. Really interesting seeing this, like, double War Prism play. Oh, here we're going down the bottom. Um, there's your Overlords. They're going to get the Queens, um, and they're chasing a couple drones into the natural, but there is a Spore. Uh, there's still the two Archons threatening the, the natural, um, three drones down, a queen, and looks like um, trying to get this third. They might just get it as it, it does go down, and the warp prism is able to pick this up. Uh, fun fact: there, roaches don't shoot up, so these warp prisms are free to escape. 
Yeah, so it'll be pretty annoying. I think we do have a Hydra then complete here, so this will get uh, yep. resolved eventually if he gets some Hydras out. But for the, for the current uh, while, it's going to be pretty difficult for him to deal with both of these War Prisms as Queens alone. They're not the best at dealing with, uh, you know, air. Let's take a look over here back at uh, Exiled Base. Uh, we do have some mortals coming out. That does answer Roaches. Um... Let's see how he how well how heavy he commits to roaches versus hydras. We have um, speed and uh, so wait uh, baneling speed, uh, hydralist range and roach speed coming out. So maybe not a full commitment to hydras. We do see the lurker did coming out. Lurkers change the battlefield immensely. Uh, Why is, he's getting two of them? Is, do you... Oh wait. Oh really? I missed it. Yeah. Oh, that's He's unfortunate. Yeah, I think that's definitely a mistake. <laughs> I need a lurker's den. It gets into the middle attack. Oh shit! I really need a lurker's den. Um, you know, I saw it. It didn't even register. Oh well. Um, He's already long distance mining from his third, trying to, to make up a little bit of slack there. As I love this continued harassment from the war prism. This one's the full. Of the this one's the DT. Um. As they're a little safer for a little bit, uh, but there is the Overseer. He's going to spot them, and as it turns out, DT is very offensive, uh, not very defensive. Uh, a little bit of pressure coming down here to the gold base. Uh, just a handful of lings over here putting, applying some pressure, requiring a response uh, from the from the protoss. What I, what I do enjoy doing is queuing up lings in places like this, and then I get to ignore them. <laughs> um, and force my opponent to respond to, you know, random link floods. Yeah. Micro, what's that? Um, again, Roach is doing some patrol. Take a look at the units tab. The army is a lot smaller for World of Doom. Um, which, I mean, it's, it's, it's normal. He can pull a lot out all at once, but the worker count isn't significantly higher. Some of those DT attacks really kind of reset the Zerg aggression. That's something you really got to do. We don't want to leave World is doing the opportunity to macro unharassed. Yeah, um, that harassment was just really well done by Exiled, um, especially just killing that third base like that. Really put World is Doom on the back burner for quite a while, and uh, I'm not even sure if he has recovered from it yet. Like, his... Third base only just finished like a bit a minute or so ago. Like, that's that's pretty insane. That's a, a long time without a third base. A little bit of a timing attack here. Ground weapons one just finishing. Um, he's going to get this third again. Um, kind of a sneaky fourth down there. Yeah, but maybe Exiled will pick it up on the way out if he notices it. He did. There was a drone running away. Whether or not he had, he'd caught that. Um, yeah, I guess. Um, you know, that fourth base is still alive, and we do have lurkers out. Um, lurkers are okay, um, but lots of immortals are, and archons are very good versus lurkers, so. I do love the escape of those DTs, um, as they went in to see if they can get anything done, running to the Overseer, and then getting to, to, to morph right back out. We do have some very aggressive and close together creep spread here, uh, from World is Doom as he... He makes his way out here to try to connect some future potential bases. Um, there's a DT going to check the gold base, seeing nothing is there, as the army continues to maneuver around. Yeah, um, this is. I feel like World of Doom is still very much on the back burner here, as I said earlier. Uh, Definitely on the that back burner. That army foot. from Exiled is pretty strong, and he is going up into carriers, I believe. He has a Stargate and a Fleet Beacon on the map right now. Yep. Getting into that tier 3 tech definitely uh, shifts the game a bit. Uh, this is the point where World of Doom would want to be pushing max supply. Um, he's, he's definitely been contained. Um, he's going to miss a warp prism. Taking a little bit of health there off those um, off those walls before seeing the army pushing over here to his fourth. Um, just constantly taking down these bases, keeping him uh, behind. There goes the warp prism. Okay, um, I really feel like World of Doom needs to take a good fight sometime in the near future. Because um, if Excel is able to keep this army alive while getting carriers, it's going to be so difficult for World of Doom to do anything. Especially since he's just now getting access to Hive Tech. Yep. Um, we don't see any Infestors, we don't see any, um, you know, Zerg tech progression really, except for that Hive. Uh, so I'm not sure what he's going to be going into, but if he decides to go into Spire for Broodlords, he's not going to have a good time versus carriers going Broodlords. I would like to see the Lurkers burrow right here. 
Um, but it looks like he's taking his time. There we go. We're right there. Block off any defense or any any call to assistance that this base can get. Um, but actually, decide to take this fight here on top of the lurkers. Um, probably the best fight World of Doom could have could have asked for, um, but not nearly enough there as his army is completely mowed over. Uh, yeah. Ca casually a moved even, uh, getting only six workers for his trouble and losing his entire uh, entire army. Even the reinforcements having to turn around and run away. Yeah, that was pretty unfortunate there for World of Doom losing all those lurkers. Um, pretty much put him back to almost you know step one. Uh, if we want to say that, I mean the army value. I mean it looks good, but this is this is Ling Hydra. This is not. This is tier one, tier two units here. I'm um, actually going to break down these rocks. Gives him an opportunity to break down those rocks again. <laughs> That's good. As yeah, I, I think I just didn't want to get trapped in there. That's good. Take him down just a bit. Notices the fourth is up. Ooh, yeah, it's going to be pretty tough. Um, it's going to take all World of Doom control um, at Exile to just stay alive here, but that won't even matter that much because we do have carriers on the way here. And, um, you know, he's going to use everything he can to stay alive here, but can he deal with the follow-up? I don't necessarily like this move, this super hyper-aggression here from Exile, with carriers on the way. Carriers are great as long as you have an army remaining to support them. And Protoss isn't the most um, reinforced, uh, quickly reinforcing army. We do see a couple things over here. They're going to pull the army. They should pull the army back a little bit. Uh, at least to answer them. And looks like he's decided he wants this gold base gone. Yeah, um, I think those lanes were just a move there, but I really would have loved to see them just right-clicked on the Nexus itself. Um, there we go. In a situation like this, you've really got to prioritize your targets. Every every and second right. counts, I can see it. Oh, this is a heavily defended base, so he's not going to have an, he wouldn't be able to bust this. So it was a good call sending him the way he did. But he is hiding these carriers. I don't where we were at on the map on these carriers. They were queued to go here. Okay. Right. He's hiding them pretty well. I don't believe they've been spotted. No. Um and I'm not I definitely don't feel like uh, World of Doom realizes this either. As he is getting um the Darker upgrade. Mm -hmm. I feel like if he realized that there was uh carriers on the map, he would sure. just forgo that entirely. Uh get out some infestors, get out some corruptors or uh, just something to deal with them. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how he prefers to. Uh, we've seen, uh, I've seen in Cadavisa this morning, um, Stefano using infestors to great effect versus a carrier army. But uh, I'm not sure what, you know, most Zergs are thinking is the response to carriers right now. It's uh, definitely a tough time as a Zerg player to deal with that late game. And it really is because you're dealing with something that can abuse the map. And you, you need to build things that can affect both the carriers and the rest of the Protoss army while not getting you know, trapped around map features as they can back up and pull away. Um, but you see a, a good engagement here, carriers in a very safe distance, um, getting lots of getting lots of damage and several kills here as the Archons come forward to tank most of the damage. Um, all the things that shoot up are just about dead. In fact, most of this army is dead. Bring them down to 32 supply, chasing away just a handful of Bane Ling Slings, Hydras kind of running, rushing away from, from this ongoing Onslaught. The only thing slowing it down is that carriers aren't the fastest units. And there's the GG. Yeah. Alright, so pretty well played uh, game from Exile there. It really was. interesting opening too. Uh, I wasn't quite sure about that at the start, but he made it work. Yeah, I don't know if he was... He, oh, he seemed to have kept his opponent on the back foot the entire time. Um... Constant, constant pressure, constant back and forth. Um, clever stuff. Yeah, and I, I kind of, as I said, like Axel, like he doesn't always do like meta builds. Like I do, I don't think I've ever seen anyone go, you know, warp prism drop into blink DTs with two warp prisms. <laughs> but he just like makes it work, and I think that's like it's it's almost beautiful, like for like StarCraft players to be able to do that. Sure, sure. Like he, he, he can just do whatever he feels like doing and he can find a way to make it work. And you know, he did and he brought it all together. I, I think he could have, he could have gone for the throat maybe a little sooner if he was going standard, but he he won. He secured the win he needed to, but there were, there were definitely moments where he maybe pushed a little too hard or at, at the wrong angles with the wrong unit comps. Um, we're going to get into game number two and it's going to be on Catalyst. So I'm going to go ahead and Load that up and pause it. Okay, I'm just logging back in right now. Yep.
Itchy Bug is, is being vicious in chat. I don't get the reference, but I'm assuming it's an inside joke. Yeah. Um, so pretty much the the backstory with the um, what he's saying uh, is we were watching this streamer, and uh, Cameron decides to donate him a dollar, and he just says all this like really awful stuff that I, I don't think I'll ever repeat in my life. No, oh, sure. Um, sure, sure. <laughs> And uh, mostly because the guy was streaming Left 4 Dead 2, and Cameron just kept tipping them this, this stuff about, like, Coach. And uh, that was one of the things he tipped the guy. And the guy went and turned off his donation notifications because of Cameron. Oh, 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 oh man. Cameron's a... He's a quit the first. <laughs> he sounds fun. Yeah. He sounds fun. <laughs> Exiled in there with the, with, with the emojis. I think that's the emoji for happy followed by the emoji for robot happy robot happy yeah it's it's just the the bracket no oh, why does twitch have like their own emotes like that <laughs> can't you're so dumb <laughs> all right we, we won't get into this right into this right now sure, sure, sure. Um, i right. am loaded into this game all right go ahead and call it okay so three two one start all right real quick look again at this map um, this is another ramp and open space at the natural. Um, as a zerg, not something you you can really wall off, but as a protoss, more difficult to take advantage of any more or less. And if there was a ramp, um, just gives a nice defender's advantage. So we'll go ahead and do the introductions. Siegfried, take it away. All right. So spawning down here, we have in the bottom right, plain zerg. It is world is doom. His opponent. Taking one game, hoping to close it out here. It is exiled. I'd say we could get some like nice pre-recorded, like awesome voice lines for all the players of all in. But I don't know uh, if I'd want to like cue those up. <laughs> We're gonna do like the like Taste of Sarkon thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's both their voices. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was so like. It was like, uh, what's what's that term? Um, it was very corny. It was, <laughs> but it was brilliant. Um, yeah, like I always laughed every time they did it because it because it, it was almost like it was kind of bad. Like when you when you heard it, but it was just like funny. But then they'd giggle about it. Yeah, and it was just like it was a good time. Good dodging there by the by the drone. I like that he missed the uh, the probe missed it. Kept the probe from playing any of those silly games. Um, it actually gives him a second longer to uh, know that there is a natural going where that has an effect on the play he's got a rally here and it looks like he he might just be trying to keep an eye out for that natural um yeah and uh this looks like a 14 pool i believe uh, i didn't quite catch the timing that that went down but i think that is an early pool well the production um, will tell it all there are six slings that is a high number but not necessarily the end end of the world there he's going to see the natural uh, his response to this is finishing a wall Getting uh, getting some units, getting at getting that zealot out. Not a chrono boost, uh, as Ling's kind of worked the way across the map. Yeah. So uh, actually, whenever I play uh, Zerg versus Protoss, I use this build like every single time. I love this build. The uh, uh, the early the early Ling rush. The Scarlet yeah, is... the fourteen pool. Like it's so nice. Like it just lets you set the pace of the game. And like half the time, the Protoss player just you know expects you to be a nice, honorable back row Zerg, and you're like, no, I'm I'm gonna be awful, and this this game is gonna be horrible. I guess there's a great surround <laughs> here from on the Zealot. Um, this adept, this first adept helps seal this, um, really seal this defense. But I don't I don't know if he missed micros this and and allows his opponent to get the oh there it is there's the backup pylon. Um, I mean the wall's secure. Yeah, uh, World of Doom got pretty unlucky, actually, that Exiled had this wall off on the low ground. Um, a lot of Protoss players would just have a wall off kind of like at the ramp. Ooh, um, good to power with... there. Yeah, oh, he unpowered both those. That's pretty big, actually. The, um, I mean, it looks like there was a pylon, a safety pylon going on, and World of Doom backed up just enough to make it look like Exiled was safe. Um, oh, and he pulls the, the Adepts back now. They have to handle uh, more links at the front gate. So we had canceled that, that pylon because he thought he was safe, only to have him come back and continue the poke. Uh, I'm actually backing off here. A couple things in the main. Uh, not sure how much they're going to do. A couple probes pulled in if they find themselves in a dangerous position in that. 
Um, but maybe trying to pull a couple of depths away so the things at the front continue to do damage. You can see them continuing to pile up at the front. Uh, Bane links, I heard Bane links somewhere. I thought I heard that too. Uh, I don't see anything on the production tab. Oh, uh, no, that was the uh, Overlord. Oh, oh, right. Overlord morphing for link drops, right? Link drops. Yeah. I got, I kind of like old tab for a second. And I heard that like squishy noise of like something morphing. I'm like, oh, and like I tab back in immediately. I love this. He can just elevate all of them. Let's see if he decides to push. Okay, he's going to push now. There is an Oracle that does do things. Um, uh, I, was, I was really hoping you'd see some sick like Ling Micro with the Overlord where would like pick up the Lings that were being damaged before they got killed. <laughs> Watching too much GSL. You're expecting too much from us. Yeah. Um, it's actually, this Oracle's doing a lot of damage, and he's trying to wait out this Oracle's energy. Um, and he's going to, as it is out of energy, it takes a little bit to turn back on. Um, this Phoenix can pick up one Ling at a time, though. As Lings are actually getting a, uh, a swell amount of damage, and there's seven, eight, uh, just now pulling the Adepts. Ten workers, uh, eleven, oh twelve. Oh, that is brutal damage. That is a difficult place to come back to, as World of Doom has put himself on the front foot. Um, yeah, that, this is... This Game of Zerg. Like, you've seen World of Doom having so much trouble to find an opening there at the start, and it looked like Exile was able to hold it for, for quite a while. But just in that split moment of time, the Protoss defense wasn't on point. He used the energy of that Oracle too early. He didn't have his units in position, and World of Doom runs in, gets 12 worker kills, and now if you look at the units tab, uh, World of Doom is now ahead in workers, and he's on three base. He, and he did. It's great that he used this, this opportunity to, to macro, use it to his advantage. He, he, it was perfect. It was not an overcommitment. It was just the right amount to get something done. And thank you, Tom, for the cheers. I love you, too. Um, let's see where he commits to now. 60 more lings on the way. Um, lings don't shoot up, though, and these oracles have a little bit more energy to spare. Uh, he is going to have to answer to a, a queen and a spore crawler on this base, though. Um, we'll see what makes if it makes it worth it if he gets this kill. Uh, he pulls him back just in time, getting uh, three workers. Um, but you know, this is um, this is kind of a turtling location. If I was exiled, I wouldn't want to sit on two bases for very long. Uh, just come and check and see there is nothing. Uh, did not bait a a charge out of the oracles. And actually, okay, poking at the wall and then running away. See, there it is. This is that phoenix I was talking about. The phoenix that kills all your overlords. Phoenix that kills all my overlords. Yeah, that's the worst feeling in the world. It's like, because first, like, you're like, hey, why can't I see anything? But you're like, oh, hey, why can't I build anything? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do have a. They call, they, they're keeping the lings. Oh, yeah, there you go. A little bit of maneuvering there. Phoenixes are, are so smooth. I love that. Like, if I was in, in the StarCraft universe, I would love to be a phoenix pilot. Um, yeah. I imagine you'd probably get, like, motion sickness. If, if you had to be one StarCraft unit, what would it be? Um, I don't know. Not not a uh, mainling. Yeah, no, that's, like... If, you, if you're, like, an emo kid that listens to, like, Bullet From My Valentine, you'd probably want to be, like, <laughs> a mainling. But, <laughs> um, yeah, I really don't know. Uh, I'd probably like to be a Hellion. That's, that'd be pretty fun. You get really hot though in there, I imagine. Just a hellion, like a hellion driver. Yeah, like you know, you run around and burn some stuff. They they always remind me of like Mad Max movies. So I'm thinking, um, yeah, your engine's barely holding together, and you're going against like the Protoss or these you know huge alien Zerg. Um, yeah, and it's I almost find it funny. It's all like it's almost like archaic seeing them like use flamethrowers versus like these like super high tech like expensive like alien robots. And they're like, now I'll just burn them. It, it's true. Like, when I see the Hellions, I'm thinking, all right, these are good against squishy lings and nothing else. Like, in my mind, I can't picture them being like, oh, I'm going to roast a, 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 a stalker. Ooh. These poor, poor roaches. Yep. Stopped in time, only to, to instantly have the rest of the army teleport around. You think they looked those zealots in the eyes? I, I, I assume time was frozen for them, so it looked like zealots were chasing them, and then suddenly they were oh. surrounded. Oh, I guess that's a lot more... stasis -y. Yeah. Because if they could see, like, that'd be horrifying. Like, just have this zealot looking you dead in the eye. I'm coming for you. Yeah. Um, 
Oh, if I had to be a unit, hmm. I, I'm thinking, I keep going back to the human units because I like the idea of being human and maybe a ghost. Because <laughs> I think if I'm a ghost, I might not just be put into an army to, to slam my head against another army. Yeah, like people care about you. Yeah, you know? they do. So, someone doesn't tell you, run into that explosive bane lane. They tell you to run away from it. And 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 if I'm abducted by the Zerg, maybe I become the next... Uh, You'll be Queen male Blades. Yeah, male, male Kerrigan, female Kerrigan. Um, get psionic powers and eventually become the god of the StarCraft universe. Yeah, that'd be pretty sick. Oh, I already have psionic powers. Sonic swarm powers, and then the god of the universe. Um, you see these oracles over here, kind of losing their value now as mutilists are now in the field. Uh, I can chase them away. Um, this Ling Hydra Muta army, actually building up a fair number of banelings there. Uh, Muta is kind of continuing to zone out the rest of this army. That uh, very very few pieces of it shoot. I, I well, not anymore. Very few pieces used to shoot up, um, as it really re requires a, the Protoss to build the right combination of units. Uh, you see they're going to chase away this army, but behind them, the Mutalisks are uh, getting eight drones, nine drones. Um, at this point, uh, World of Doom is just occupying time as these Mutas go to town over here. Oh, excuse my mouth. Sixteen yeah, drones. And uh, I'd say he won on both fronts there. Like, even though, like, he didn't kill all of Bugsal's units in the big fight, he killed a lot of expensive ones, and plus the probes that went down. Like, that's a lot of probes. Sure. 18 probes, and when a lot of your army was banelings anyway, you got the damage you wanted to do. Uh, take a look at the, the worker count. I mean, it's 70 to 35. That tells a story. Plus two just finished up for World of Doom, so his army is getting more and more and more dangerous. King of Blades. I like it. Now I'm just going to be good enough with StarCraft to earn the title. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see what we got happening now. Uh, I really like that World is Doom only built a couple of Mutalisks with that uh, Spire. I feel sure. like a big issue uh, you see a lot of Zerg players have is like they really want to build a lot of Mutal Yeah, like they, they build so many. And it's sure. like the five Mutalisks that World is Doom built did more than, you know, 20 Mutalisks to someone else. I mean, they have the, they have mobility, but I mean, that that's the end of it. Oh, a couple of Phoenixes out of position there. Um, they have mobility, light damage, uh, pretty good against harassing worker lines, but you, they're not the meat of any army. Um, so I understand completely. I do love the Banes. I do love the Banes in the mix of this army. It really throws, um, really requires a lot more micro positioning from Exiled. Um, as they, they charge in, oh, looks like they're going to do a nice split there. Handful of Banelings to the middle lines, handful of Banelings crashing into what is the meat of the army in the Zell. It's good splash damage. The wall is down. Gives these Hydras a lot more room to get damage. A great pickup there. Banelings uh, being lifted in the air by the Phoenixes. Um, but so many more left as units continue to stream across the map. Looks like yeah, he's focused fire. Like, yeah, yeah he, he really wants that hatch or that uh, Nexus kill, but I think that's a really nice decision making there. Realizing what's important in this fight isn't the army, it's the Nexus. He needs to make sure he continues that economic advantage. And uh, that's what he's going to do. You know, and I, and interesting enough, though, I, it looks like he had the fight anyway. Yeah. I, I don't know. I think he, he still could have taken the army fight and had the Nexus, but, I mean, he walks away with, I think it ended up being like 10 kills total. He got, he's got lurkers in the field that are really going to zone this out. The Protoss is now behind two bases, one of them uh, mining out heavily, uh, and lurkers actually in a great concave here. Um, they have to be answered, or you're going to lose your tech, or you're going to lose the, the ability to make stalkers, um, adapts, it looks like yeah, Exxon has nothing uh, to do but stand back here and lose. Yeah, he, there's no way he can go out. He's like, he's SimCityed himself into a bad position here. Like, that, right. that SimCity was great in the start, but now World of Doom is beating it. Like, it, you're right. It actually, he he has to. He would have to come in one at a time into the the lurkers. That's and that would just be awful. And you know, he's gonna World do. He's got to do it anyway. It's payback. Ooh, there's the liftoff by the Phoenix. Excellent job. Um, but still, there's just so much army here. That Ling and Bane are pushing back all the Immortals, and there's the GG. World of Doom ties it up. 1-1. One, one. Yeah, uh, really nice game by World of Doom. Uh, again, I, I really love those early pool builds from Zerg. Um, I just think they're they're kind of what you need to do in the meta right now. Yeah. Especially because Zerg has such a good early game, um, but 
I would say a pretty poor late game versus Zerg in like a no rush twenty type of game. <laughs> no rush twenty. Yeah, uh, I, I I did that. I I <laughs> did early Starcraft. Yeah, I I would always I would want to play that way. I never like asked my opponents to. Actually, I I used to play Age of Empires three a lot actually, and uh, people would have like game mode set that way. Like you could literally not attack your opponent for twenty minutes. It was um. I like to, you know, I like to, I like to wish, I wish I'd played more original StarCraft when I did, but, um, I wish I played more StarCraft than I did. Yeah, anyway, but I, I definitely remember just no Rush 20. Hey, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's go. Let's do this army we've been, like, sitting on for, for 20 minutes together. Yeah. Um, it, like, it got rid of all the, like, frustrating parts of the game. You know, you didn't have to worry about people harass, harassing you or, you know stopping you from building up your sick looking base i i didn't also have to yeah it's 20 minutes still that max i didn't i also didn't have to learn the game i had no idea yeah. what was going on you uh, just built whatever you felt like like the, the order didn't matter because yeah. you get one of everything anyways man this unit's cool let me do this <laughs> uh, I remember when i first started playing as terran i would like only build one building of each that was like, uh I just built one oh barrier. yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's rough <laughs> I think it was an early day nine video where he said um, he's, he's one of those like beginner fundamental videos and he's talking about um, people like asking him what to build. You know, if you like void rays, just build a bunch of void rays. That's okay. Like whatever it is, whatever's fun for you. And back then, that's what it was. Back then before the internet, well, not before the internet, before I played online, um, I was competing with people I knew. I wasn't getting smashed online. It's just chill. It's a yeah, lot more chill. There, there, there wasn't millions of people who were infinitely better than you. Everyone was just kind of like, everyone was just bad. Everyone was but just they were bad, good yeah. at one thing. You know, like there was. I mean, there I was that tournament section, but I didn't know they existed. I didn't have to worry about them. I hurt my ego yeah. at all. Hmm. I am loaded right, in. Uh, same. Okay. Ready, ready, ready. Go all for right. it. Three, two, one, start. All right, so this map is. Abogenesis. Um, this one's got a forward expand, uh, natural towards the enemy, and a couple entry points uh, from multiple directions. The third, uh, the re only real third option, uh, kind of down here, wrapped around, uh, really, really gives a favor to a lot of aggressive play. Um, but with that said, will you do the honors? All right. So down here we have in the bottom right, in the red, this world is doomed. And his opponent in the top left, exiled. Now, while, while you like do your introduction, I'm always like trying to get the camera right, so I do some kind of like nice zoom in and rotate. <laughs> but as I do it, I'm like, oh wait a minute, is he saying the right person? Did I just completely ignore <laughs> what you're saying? And I'm zooming in. On... It hasn't happened yet because you keep no. you keep uh, introducing the person you start in on. Um, so yeah, was... actually, when I first started casting, I read like this blog someone had made about like um good like casting tips and yeah. one of the tips on it was like casting etiquette and it's like if you're casting of someone always introduce the person that you like spawn in on so like that's what i was trying to do now that is good and i'm gonna use that forever and that is now part of my etiquette <laughs> uh that is that is brilliant um so he's gonna come over here uh exile is gonna see the same thing he saw i believe he saw the drone come out this time um didn't try to did not was not that absolute pain the ass protoss that gets in your way <laughs> if you're natural oh my gosh i started like sitting sitting about it like 16 just to avoid it yeah. um no i don't I, that's a lie i actually just make it on the third <laughs> i make it on the third i'm like well yeah. screw you buddy it's like you just proxy hatched them yeah um and then oh nice wall here actually uh is that a that's not a full wall right no, he has a little bit of room there for the zealot right beside the pylon. Nope, I see it right there. Uh, good wall here. He is double. Look, he's going to double pile on this now after after the last game. Uh, whether or not that's whether or not that's intentional or just what he requires for the wall, uh, the zealot is in position here. Um, but you just see he can see from this position. The overall has got decent vision on some move outs. He can see the third. He can kind of go back and forth pretty safely at least until air comes out. It uh, looks like the zealot. Uh, coming out here to address these lings, uh, but not not the same aggression we saw last time. Still, 
still a larger number of wings, and he's actually opting for a fast third down there. Um, his opponent. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, sorry, that's going to work out pretty well for him, I think. Um, I think that third is a lot faster than the last game, because I think he realizes that he, he won't be able to get as much damage done this game. Um, Exile will expect it, and he has. So it's going to be a lot harder for him to get damage done. You know, I'm going to take a lesson from World of Doom here. I love this poking out and, and kind of staying at your opponent's base. Um, you don't necessarily need to do, da you do the damage, but you can poke in. You can see some stuff. You can leave before damage is done. Uh, your opponent's not going to catch you off guard because you don't have vision on that side of the map because maybe you're afraid for the life of your overlord who's kind of hanging out over here. Uh, actually spotted by this adept who was maybe looking out for drops. Because uh, that is actually the only really good drop location. It's right there. So really good adept placement here by Exiled. Yeah, uh, definitely. I don't think there's any other place nope. you can really drop from unless you decide to go, like, you know, just straight over to natural. And it looks like it was spotted. But he's coming, he's moving him away to answer it. There we go. Then she's just going to come over uh, here and push this away. Oh, he might lose that sentry, actually. Oh, well, Depth's coming uh -huh. in to save it. Yeah. Oh, that was, did that push the, the, that Zergling onto that little club? I, I don't know. I think it did. Oh, that's smart. I like that. A little bit of, also prevents surface area from the sentry, and the Ling's just going to get, get in here. They're going to see there's no tech. Um, not not gonna get anything done. Yeah. Um. Luckily, he only did make. I think uh, he made like six to eight links there. He did. So not a not a big commitment at all. And he was droning behind it, so he's not even. He's still a bit behind in drones, but he will catch up and he will get back to where he wants to be. Sure. Once he uh, puts a couple more units out, it looks like he is opting to just. There we go. Ten more links and a bane links nest being thrown down, uh, as long as as well as a roachborn. The uh, Ro Robo facility and the Twilight Council uh, in production too for Exiled. These are actually some relatively long games today. Yeah, um, kind of surprised. We haven't really seen any games. There are too many games that were like straight up bops. Yep. Like no, no super cheesy rushes that ended them in, in five minutes. Yeah, they've all been like, pr you know, pretty cl uh, drawn out. At least like. You know, more than one engagement. There's a little bit of uh, scouting. I, I love the positions from the lings. Just one one ling here. Such a cheap unit. Provides you vision for when they when they go to expand, or at least you know to check it when it dies. Um, remove them off your hotkey and fire and forget. Yeah, uh, that's definitely something that I think is like another good sign of like a good third player is you know just using those lings so. You know, those are your eyes and ears in the early game. You really need to send those links out everywhere because you can't just rely on your overlords to tell you everything you need to know. Let me add that to my list of things to be good at. Um, Ling, map, presence. I used to do this as a, as a Terran, at least, when I was heavy Terran. Focus real heavily on both Marines and occasionally supply depots out on the map. Yeah. That's something I've always been pretty bad at, because uh, it's just so like easy to just scan and like, oh, I need to see something. Let me enable my uh, map hack for a sec. Map hack. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Zerg is. Zerg is map hacks. Get that yeah. creep all the way out there. Um, not a lot, actually. While we talk about creep, not a lot of creep here. But he does have a creep queen. Yeah, interesting. Um, I guess probably just focusing on his adjux for the start of this. Uh, of course, it is kind of like a lot to handle at the start, like you know, constantly injecting and creeping and like controlling your lings and your overlords sure. and all this other stuff. So I can definitely see why some zergs kind of wait a bit until there's like a bit of a lull. I think that's the other sign of a good, you know, good player when we see this engagement about to happen. You know, is he injecting right before the engagement? Is he creep spreading right before the engagement? Kind of pulls army back half a step and focus on those macro tasks that are going to save him once this fight is over and he needs units. And we do have an engagement here, force field getting that Ravager on the on the low ground. Uh, then he's going to come over here and, and freely take this third. It looks like. Yeah, and this is um, pretty unfortunate here for World of Doom. I feel like that was one of his. Um... One of his advantages that he had in this game, and now that that's gone, he's going to have to uh, rely a lot more on just killing this army. Like, I think that's what he needs to do now. 
Um, he's not going to be able to macro this up if uh, Exile heads home. A lot of Balin's getting cut out there. Uh, yep. Zealots are running into the natural, it looks like. Exile splitting up his forces, and he is going to take out these Roaches and Ravagers, but huge Balin connects are on the sentries. Roaches and Ravagers fighting versus these sentries and Archons, but it looks like they will get cleaned up. Yeah, good split there, really dictating how much force you needed to handle this Roach Ravager at the, at the top, and then sending all the remaining Zealots over here to handle the natural um, Warp Prism over there. Still a position and poised to warp through. 15 drones going down. Um, absolutely fantastic aggression here from Exod. Good, solid two-base timing. We do see the third. Um, no, that never went up, did it, for Rexiled? Nope. Uh, I think he, he was definitely pressuring, like, or posturing like he was going to take one, and I think that confused the world of Doom and... Mind you know, games! Yeah. I love it. And uh, that's definitely going to win him this game here, as I don't think uh, world of Doom can really do much else here. He's only off one hatch for now. He's got a, a third one over there, or second one, well, a uh, second one, I guess, being produced. Um... Actually, a, third, a macro hatch and, and this one up in the nerd base. But there is the GG, and Exile takes the third game and takes the series 2-1. So we have one more now, um, one more for this for this group. We're going to watch World is Doom and Nicro. And if I'm, I'm looking at the... Quit replay. If I'm looking at the player one, player two, Nicro took... His first game, Nicro took his second game. Um, Exile took his second game in the walkover. Took this game. So it looks like Nicro and Exiled are staged to advance. Uh, World is Doom giving up the double walkover. And this game, at that, I think that eliminates his chances. So we just get to watch, um, watch this one for funsies. All right. Oh, that's my hanger. Look at that. Hanger's in the camera. So we're on World of Doom versus Necro, right? We are, yes. Okay. Which one are we starting on? Um, oh, they didn't name. I'm still loading in. Yep. World of Doom versus Necro, where are you at? Let's go ahead and uh, black pink alphabetical order. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you uh, for hanging out with us so far. This has actually been a lot of really good, really good games. This was a surprisingly strong group um, for the lack of, you know, with the number of walkovers, at least, that, that, that came out of it. Um, and thank you again for Siegfried for joining me. I definitely have saved my voice and my sanity tonight because you're here with me. <laughs> yeah, uh, solo costume is pretty hard. Um, I, I do like solo costume, but it's definitely, it's a lot harder to just mentally, like, keep yourself going it's a lot easier when you got someone there talking to you it makes your brain more active i feel i i've definitely adapted the the strategy of filling all the white noise with this flow of thought um when i do it I, I, that seems to be the effective approach um but let me know when you're loaded in uh i'm good to go all right on your count okay three two one start okay take a quick look at this map as I am prone to do, uh, it is a a ramp to the natural, a big ramp from the natural, and a relatively close third base if we're going vertically, and kind of an aggressive out of the way one um, if we're going uh, to the front of the main with these destructible rocks over here, and a little bit of gas to kind of cloak any units trying to maneuver in that direction. Um, but with that said, why don't you start us in with the introduction? All right. So we have a peer spawning in the top right position in the red. It is World is Doom. His opponent, the blue Protoss, spawning in the bottom left-hand corner. Uh, moving on to the round of eight, it is Nicro. All right. So I'm opting again for this nice wall in the front, as we've seen him prone to do. Um, Yeah, so it's Nicro Exiled Advance from this group, right? It is. It is. Okay. Um, if World of Doom takes this, he's still lost. Um, take a quick look at my... World of Doom has lost a double walkover, and Nicro has won every game. Every set. Ah. Nice. Uh, 
well, kind of unfortunate for uh, that walkover to happen, but obviously, you know, stuff happens. It does. Life life happens, and, you know, this is just StarCraft, and we're just a, a wonderful amateur league. Yeah, can it, yeah I don't, obviously, like, we obviously don't expect people to, you know, <laughs> uh, tell their friends and family to, you know, frig off so they can play some video games. We, we understand stuff happens. I should, uh, you're right. I should apologize to the girlfriend for spending all my time here. <laughs> uh, all right, so taking a quick look, we are getting these uh, naturals for both uh, both players. A uh, nice wall in here uh, for Nicro. The um, Cybernetics core about to finish. Uh, looks like he's going to want to get out the the adept soon so we can push back into this pressure a little easier. This is a, a kind of an abusable wall if he wants to try to draw out the zealot. There you go. There's that chrono booster. There's that adept on the way. Um, good timing there as this probe. Actually getting taken out by a couple of lings on the other side of the map. Um, and he's just going to take these pokes. He's going to get as much as he can. Force, hopefully forces Zealot out, uh, out of position. But there you go. There's already even a probe there in position just so the Zealot could go out without getting uh, <laughs> without getting forced away. And there's the Adept kind of stutter stepping in the middle of the map. Yeah, so all in all, um, World of Doom didn't really accomplish anything with that. And uh, I feel like even just, like, the little subtleties of how that, like, wall was made. Like, if you notice, there's no pylons out on the front. Mm -hmm. So it'd be a lot harder for him to, like, um, chip away at a building and kill it. Sure. Whereas, like, you know, if... Um, if Nick, or Sorry, if uh, he had a pylon out on the front, it's possible he could get a pylon, and that's still something. Ooh. But, uh... We do see a morphing overlord, but we have the adepts already in position. He seems to have this timing down on when he wants to be looking for it. both both him and exiled in the last match waiting for these drops world of doom uh is he famous for these uh i'm not sure uh i guess i don't really know what uh, world of doom is like stereotyped as or you know what his uh known tendencies are sure but i think this is probably really common right now just on ladder he's like he's going the long way around uh looks like he may have seen those adepts trying to find a position of the closest route um but this nice slow overlord uh, going the long way may at least buy him a little bit of time as you see over here on the wall we do have additional adepts that could be brought in to respond to this but just enough to get this done uh back at home a couple uh just a couple spore crawlers are placed down no more forces we do see the drop and the adepts come in to try to stop this now this is always this is always requires a lot of micro so if he wants to hit these drones he's got a target fire right because they're otherwise they're going to go for the attacking units, the adapts. Yeah. Um, one thing that I think is really awesome about this play, though, um, you'll notice that Necro did activate the Oracle to try to kill those lings. Yep. And so I don't. He didn't kill a single one of them, but the, he forced them to kind of hide, which uh, is good for Necro, but also bad at the same time, because now he can't use that Oracle offensively. He has to keep that home because it has no energy to use. Is now is now open to charge twice. Um, and you know, every, I think it was said just the other day on the um, in the Scarlet match, uh, made me think the exact same thing. And she baited out some um, Oracle charges. And it's just it's just so nice. I feel um, and just like you have those lings anyways because you made them for the potential of early pressure. Yeah, they're they're not doing anything, so you use them to pretty much deny harassment um, by forcing that Oracle to stay home. Just a really nice play, and you see it a lot, and I think it's just a really good play overall. Now, we are seeing three Oracle, excuse me, two Oracles and a Phoenix come across the map, along with four Adepts. Uh, they have a lot of options here on how he's going to kind of pressure and poke. Um, oh, there we go. That's that's an Overlord, at least. Well, nope, that's an Overlord poke. Queen being picked up, but that Spore doing a, a fair amount of damage. Uh, getting four drones for his efforts, um, kind of microing, trying to micro those oracles back and forth away, kind of trade off the damage, uh, and they're going to be pushed back after getting eight drone kills. Ooh, excuse me, eight drone kills to include these adepts down here uh, as he was pressuring the third base. Nine. Yeah, and this yeah. is really unfortunate for World of Doom. I feel like after you go for these early pools, like, uh, you kind of throw away a lot of your, um, what do you want to call it, like, your comeback potential in a sense like 
if you lose a, a lot of drones in the early game in a normal macro game, sure. you're like, okay, that's fine. Like, I have some extra larva because I haven't been building too many units. Mm -hmm. I can recoup that. Right. But when you right. go for these early pool builds, you kind of sacrifice a lot of the potential larva and um, income you get. So losing these drones is so much more important um, because you kind of are limited in the amount of larva and uh, units you have committed to building drones. So uh, taking damage like this is pretty bad because uh, for World is Doom, I feel. Kind of that counterattack pressure. He doesn't have anything to stave it off. Is that what we're... Yeah, yeah. It's like he's he's uh, investing money in the larva into building these lings early on. Yeah. So like he has less in total uh, for the game to use on building drones. So it's kind of like... He, if he doesn't lose drones, he'll be fine. Um, but if he loses a couple, like it's really easy for him to get really far behind super quickly. I, I definitely feel that once you lose those drones, at least uh, as a feeling, um, when I play, uh, there's a good juggling there with the with the archons. His archon drop, um, getting some damage done, kind of taking tipping away at these units, but still a good response by World of Doom to be be right on top of that. Um, it does it is going to keep at home. Um, I always feel like I have a hard time getting momentum again after taking damage like that as a Zerg. And if I spend too long trying to get my momentum back, they're back at my front door with more more, more units. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like, it just like throws you off tilt almost. Like, you have this like drone count that you're aiming for and suddenly it's gone. Now, like, what do you do? Right. And that's where, you know, that, that nice Ling vision comes into place. Was this a, a poke? Was this a... Um, this is going to be followed up by something. Uh, we do see this uh, Warp Prism is going to hang out here up top and really just keeps, I think it keeps World of Doom honest. There's actually yeah. not a lot back home for, for Nycro. It doesn't seem to... No, oh, I'm looking at the army count wrong. Yeah, There's you'll notice a... too, um, I guess a bit delayed Ling Vision, is uh, with these attacks, he's forced World is Doom to keep all of his units back at home. Sure. And you don't see any units on the map. The Phoenix is going to deny any Overlords from coming out. All the drone or all the links, sorry, are back at home because they have to be. And so World is Doom really doesn't know what Necro's up to. Yeah, this pushes completely, completely blind. The counter pressure on the other side, same thing. He does. He did recently expand two bases to kind of get rid of some of these excess minerals. And we're going to have an attack on two fronts here as these links kind of come in here and started getting some pressure on. Um, behind it, Nycro is going to actually continue his pressure onto his opponent's third base. So we might just see a trade for thirds, which for World of Doom isn't horrible. As long as yeah. his other bases stay up. Oh, it's horrible now. He's he's uncommitted to the and these links are coming back home. Yeah, I don't think they can stay there. Those are oracles of so much energy. Yeah, he might be able to get the Nexus, um, maybe. But maybe he loses he, all his army that he had to, to defend this. Yeah. And this army of uh, Necros is so strong. It's getting looking. bigger, fast, so much faster. Also, on a side note, those Archons have a really nice skin. I think that looks so sick. Oh, yeah, let me zoom in on this. Uh, 24 drones, by the way, missing there. Oh, that is gorgeous. It looks like... Um, do you play Heroes of the Storm at all? Uh, a little bit with friends. Oh, there's uh, that one map with the two like um, angels fighting. I think it's like a Diablo map or something. Yep, I've seen it. But it, it kind of looks like those... like one of the like angel things this is what we sure get when those. starcraft lets us throw money at them yeah um actually i'll be a little saltier this is what we get when they when they finish all the expansions and then now can <laughs> put their manpower towards frivolous things um oh my god a lot of banelings being lost there uh kind of being move commanded towards the mineral line there and those archon splash just like killed everything no gg even world is doomed a bit salty maybe <laughs> Do we have a World is Doom Nycro rivalry? I think we're going to start one. <laughs> I did leave the game. We could do a nice little reset. They're now bitter rivals that hate each other. So yeah, one of, one of the things that surprised me is uh, I was listening to one of those um, read one of the updates or read one of the live streams or something the developers are talking about uh, StarCraft and how now they've done Legacy of the Void, they have time to focus on things like skins and voices and, and things people have been asking for. Um, but I remember going wait a minute, it took all your manpower? Like, it took all your manpower for the expansion. I was actually I was actually surprised that they didn't have, you know, extra people to do some of the things that people would, you know, want to pay for. Yeah. Um, um, I kind of wonder, because, like, I'm pretty sure um, so Blizzard and Activision are, like, partnered, aren't they? Or something? Yeah, like, yeah, Activision owns Blizzard. Yeah, I know Activision's, like, a pretty stingy company, so, like, I'm never sure if, like, um, maybe like they just have like the bare minimum staff on yeah. StarCraft. 
Like they're just getting um, just enough to. Yeah, like because Activision's like they're they're like a huge like corporate thing, right? So like. Yeah. They're not like, giving them any extra development team. Yeah, yeah, they're they're you know they are about that bottom line. Like that's why they exist. So. All right. Uh, I'm going again. Catalyst. Yeah. Game number two. Um, so what do you think? Drumhead World said that. that was that? Drumhead said in chat that there were in voice during the set. So I guess maybe that's why he didn't say GG. Because he said it in person. Yeah, in real life. Yeah. Or what he probably said was like, you know, he screamed an obscenity at him. He's like, I'm going to beat this sh- crap out of you next game. You know, that's, I'm. I don't know. I'm a habit of even doing it in game. <laughs> like, I'll say GG and I'll still type it. Yeah. He's uh, He was salty. Drum was salty. Yeah, they hate each other. They're pure, pure enemies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, I'm loaded in whenever you're ready. Okay, go ahead and give us a countdown. All right, three, two, one, let's go. All right. So quick look at the map. Um, we've looked at this one a few times. Big open area down here out of the natural, and really a lot of... A lot of options once you get your third on where you're going to take your fourth, whether you continue along at the top, move forward to your enemy, or put yourself kind of out of the way, um, a more difficult to defend location. Um, I'll take a look at the attack paths on this map. It looks like, um, really, we see the most common is right down the middle, but there is there is a left and a right, and a far left and a far right if you're trying to avoid vision. Uh, but that being said, start us out with the introduction. All right, so spawning up here in the top left, we have in a red. It is World is Doom. And his opponent in the bottom right, hoping to close this out. It is Nicro. Right, this probe over here uh, sees that there's no natural yet. Uh, comes up here, spots the the gas is finished, and the uh, spawning pool is on the way. Yeah, so another early pool. Um, I guess this is his go-to build. And I've seen this, and I used to think that I could predict aggressive builds based on that that spawning pool timing, but people are doing it on on all ends. Yeah, um, it's it's definitely kind of like annoying. Like if you don't play Zerg, I feel like um, it's very hard to tell like when the timing of the like spawning pool is. Or even in, like if you don't scout it right away, like if you just see it being built or like mm-hmm. finished building, it's very hard to tell what the timing of that was because like a 17 pool is a lot different than a 14 pool, which is a lot different than a 12 pool. Sure, but we've all been trained, and and at least I have that you know 12 pool or 6 pool means aggression. Yeah. Right. And then I've seen 12 pools thrown into economic builds, and I'm trying to find the difference in worker counts, and you know why is he not behind in workers, and I I, I never. Yeah, it's yeah. hard to pick apart for me. Yeah, because you see people do it sometimes. And it's like it doesn't make any sense why they would. So you like react defensively, but then they just go macro. Right. Like, what? And I think I've seen it the most in like you know twelve pulled and like gas cancel, get out the extra drones, and it's it's all over the place. I this game is 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 challenging, at at worst, um, insane. Yeah, I remember yeah. something Nick Monroe said in this Discord one time. It was like. Zerg, was it? it was like Zerg is really hard if your opponent make that makes decisions that don't make sense. Hmm. It's a good way to put it. No, oh, he could have. He might have gotten that gateway if he stayed on it. But yeah, push. No, no. Don't let me say that. Um. Yeah, if your opponent does things that don't make sense, because they they still have so many options. Yeah, Zerg is like the logical race. It's like, it's like the Vulcans from Star Trek, but. Uh, if they were like connected with the board hey thank you wild drum for the follow nice to have you i could see it yeah more the right. borg maybe more the borg that whole hive yeah. mind yeah but then they make like the logical like sound decisions like the vulcans do so they gotta you know they have that the mind of the the vulcans with the bodies of the board almost well, world of doom is doing another ling drop for what is the third game in a row we've watched and it's never worked out for him yeah um this game though i don't think he showed the units out front but it looks like uh, nicro is still expecting it because he did see that early pool it's gonna get pushed away that phoenix skin looks really nice too actually it is 
It's just really low settings. Time, yeah, I really, I really appreciate when they make the skins look nice in like every setting. Gotta, gotta earn that skin money. Yeah. It's like they realize that you know, people who you know maybe can't afford their best computers, they still got you know two bucks to spend on the skin as long as it looks nice. <laughs> I try. I try to show my support. I, I've bought every skin they've put out. Um, I've bought a bunch of the voice packs, and uh, I bought all the like. I bought war chests on all my accounts. Oh. But I've I've bought a couple of the like normal skins they've released, but I haven't bought all of them. Fair enough. I gotta I gotta save to buy <laughs> my new computer parts. So. All right. I couldn't uh, I couldn't afford as much money to give to Blizzard. One second. All right, um, Oracle coming in here. Uh, looks like it's going to head towards the second base. And support color is just going up now, but I'm not in place at the right time. And a lot of the drones going to get killed off by this Oracle. Really detrimental, especially after that early pool. You don't have as many drones to work with. So losing any is uh, pretty annoying here for World of Doom. It does look like the... Um... I mean, it's a fair number. Yeah, only four. Like, that's not bad, but... He's a big uh, responsive Ling, so, as he's... Um... Yeah, and he actually got pretty supply blocked from that, too, only just now realizing. Um, so it's going to be pretty annoying, especially as he's trying to put on this pressure, I assume. Oh, looks like these adepts are going to take a moment and hang out over there. Um, take a look at the base. Let's get a count of what's going on here. Uh, in the production tab, now we do have layer uh, being teched at the layer. We have a handful of drones being made. Uh, for the Protoss, we do have uh, adept glaives. Uh, looks like he's decided to, to come home. Uh, wait for those to finish. It looks like he might be home just in time. For this counter, uh, for this counter pressure here from World is Doom, and that is a lot of adepts. Um, these links aren't going to stand much of a chance. Uh, great use of the Oracle there to tag them. Yeah, he's even getting re uh, resonating glaives for these oracles, or not these oracles, these adepts. Sorry. <laughs> and he has a lot of gateways coming up too. So this looks like it could be a uh, three base pressure here with a lot of adepts. Is is three base? I mean, I feel is three base pressure. Um, for a... Protoss, like with Adepts, I think it's like something that is done. Okay. Um, because okay. Adepts don't translate well into that late game. Like, they sure. they get melted by Hydras, they get melted by Banelines, so they're not great in that later game where you have Hydras and Banelines on the field. Um, so you kind of need to make use of them in this early timing. And especially just with the amount of gates we see, uh, I definitely feel like this is not. He's not going to sit back and macro with these, as we do see. He is pushing towards. Uh, these bases here are going to see where he can slide in. Yeah, looks like he's going to decide to take that third base as, uh, at the same time, counter pressure here from Mortis Doom. As he attempts, uh, he comes in to take this third base. Actually, a couple of depths there, scaring that away, not getting more than two probes, five drones falling for Mortis Doom. As uh, these adepts continue to, to slam into the hatchery, actually teleporting over here uh, as they love to do, uh, getting a couple more drones and, and pushing pressure, uh, splitting the pressure up. Uh, reinforcements actually joining the fight here. Uh, and there's the GG. And Nicro takes this one <laughs> two to zero. So that's going to be it for group B. It is. Uh, so we're going to get into group C, which um, technical was, and I have it up, pulled it up now. Technical was um, pulled out of. And I pulled out of technical, yeah. left the clan to go yeah, into he, some big things. Yeah, he forfeited. Uh, all his remaining spots though. So let's um, get this nice and pretty at the top. We So we only actually have two maps to go here. Um, so to summarize, Group B, leaving Group B is uh, Nicro and Exiled. Um, congratulations to both of them, and we were looking forward to seeing them in the round of um, uh, round of eight. Uh, and then Group 
C is going to be Shazam Poof's uh, surreal, uh, surreal and Wagon facing off. In, in only two games, there was a double walkover for the Wagon and Surreal were unable to find time to play their game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, stop the video here. I'm going to put us on a short break. Um, we'll be back in approximately five minutes. That sound good for you, Siegfried? Yeah, that's fine. All right. I'll see you all in just a moment.